The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. It is time to keep your appointment. And welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 149. My name is Gav. And you sound like a bingo caller. My name is Dan. Uh, I was about to do the one for two fat ladies. Is that appropriate anymore? Not anymore. What What would it be now? What it, was it, What was that? It, it was eighty eight two fat ladies. Why is that? Why are these? Mm. Just because I don't know. You're not allowed to say it. It's body shaming, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Bingo. It was an eighties thing. I've only ever had a go at bingo once, and uh, I think I've got like this Rain Man thing going on, and I was just like, I won, and like, the old the old ladies kind of looked at me and they're like, yeah, that's very quick. And I kind of went, uh, I reckon I could be really good at bingo, like some fucking bingo Paul Newman fucking shark hustler type sort of thing going on here. And um, I thought I can't do it. So I left my bingo career behind me that day. Wow. With £15 in my pocket. I I go to bingo every time we go on a caravan holiday in the UK. Mm -hmm. We do bingo. Alice absolutely loves it. And I've won, one year, I won 70 quid, um, which I then spent... On, behind the bar, and my family I bought my family because it was back when I used to drink. We were with all my family and bought them around a couple of rounds of drinks. But um, what I like doing is because it's usually lots of old ladies, yeah. And I'm usually I, I used to be a bit drunk playing it. Whenever they call, you used to be an old lady. What's this some Benjamin be a, Button thing going on? It. I used to be an old lady. Um, whenever they call sixty nine, because they used to say dinner for two sixty nine. <laughs> But, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, but they don't do that. Obviously, again, they don't do that anymore. And they you don't imagine say, the old friend, how laugh the way is like, they, you're not thinking about sucking dick. You know, like, well, getting they, your fanny they, licked. They don't say legs 11 either anymore. They do still say, um, what is the one for 17? It's like almost, almost keen 17 or something like that. And you're really? like, that's a bit. But anyway, I used to like it when they call 69 because I would always do a big wolf whistle. Um, and all the old ladies would go. <laughs> I bet you'd get one of them, which is a bit of a you know, bit, she's a bit naughty in her heyday, and she still would if you gave her a chance in the cleaners cupboard around the corner. I yeah. bet she gave you the look. There we go. My mum still uh, likes it, and um, what? Just... <laughs> bingo. Oh, bingo, bingo, bingo. My mum still likes bingo, and uh, Sarah says she wants to go do bingo with my mum. Yeah. Anyway, let's get off this. Anyway, we're a horror well. movie podcast. We're not a uh, uh, we're not a bingo appreciation rec- society. And uh, sort of a very traditionally old recreational uh, background mm-hmm. podcast. Well, this is episode one hundred and forty-nine. Thank you for joining us. We are excited because we it's our tenth year of podcasting. So one thing we're doing this year is whenever there isn't a patron pick or a birthday special or a Christmas special or something, we're either going to do a franchise that we've started and we're sort of coming to the end of or in the middle of or we're going to do a director's special so I believe this is our first director's special of the year yeah because we've done them previously we've done uh, like uh, three maybe of two or three of John Carpenter ones where we've done yeah, double bills done and three. Threes. and we have done other directors over the years we've done some of the old classic directors we've back done in the day. Some, we've done uh, Romero we've done Craven yeah. we've done um, Toby Hooper we've done Spielberg in fact um, yeah we've done three one, one of our one of our most popular uh, shows back in the day I don't know if it still is um, was the Spielberg episode yeah Jules and Park. Yeah. yeah, like a lot of views. It listens. But um, we've decided to tackle someone who is, uh, he's not a new voice to the horror community, but he's like the newer generation, although he's been in the game for a long time. Hmm. So we're covering Mr. Adam Green. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's funny, actually, because uh, you sort of programmed this, and but out of all of the direct specials we do... Uh, Adam Green, I've had uh, uh, interactions with before over the years. Uh, not not because I'm special in any way. He does it with everybody. He's one of those characters who's uh, 
uh, fairly nice gentleman and um, he will message back if you message him I don't think he does so much na- nowadays but that's because there's so many fucking idiots on the internet yeah. and uh, uh, I think they just probably drummed him down to like fuck this um, but I'm sure he pretty pretty, pretty would if, he, if you got hold of him um, but he, he, out of all of the moments we do I've spoke to him a couple times before and um, I will mention him because I do I'm actually a patron of his podcast Funny yeah. enough. Um, so I've been listening to his show weekly for the past 10 or so years. So you do get to know your hosts. Like, imagine you lot know us. And he does come across, and we'll get into his bio and his uh, back catalogue. Um, he does he does come across as a likeable, approachable person. Um, and he, although he hasn't done a huge amount of um, features... You know, you most people will know his movies. You know, like the two movies we're covering, which I'll mention now. Uh, we're covering Frozen, not the Disney Pixar one. We're covering Frozen from 2010, and we're also covering Digging Up the Marrow from 2014, which is kind of a faux mockumentary slash almost a fan footage movie. Um, which I, I, I is, well, I'm, I think is awesome, but we'll get into that. Sorry to spill my beans already. Um, and then, of course, the, the Hatchet series. And he's done some other stuff, television. He's got a regular podcast. So we'll get into all of that. But although he hasn't um, done a huge amount, it's the quality, not the quantity with Adam. And um, he's definitely a voice that whenever people hear, oh, Adam Green's got a new movie out, they love it. They want to go see it. And he will always push for it to be premiered at UK Fright Fest as much as possible. He, he, he really and, loves that community. Well, that, that's, that's, well, actually, no, that's a lie, actually. I was going to say that's where I've kind of uh, uh, spoke to him before. And that's a lie, actually. I spoke to him many moons ago on MySpace when he, he's... he's oh, MySpace. He, well, I was given a book for Christmas once, a book of lists, and, he, and there was a list in it where um, this person, Adam Green, I didn't actually know at the time uh, who it was, uh, just basically said, Kathy Bates is a uh, hot... Um, in this list okay, of hot women in horror, and I and I don't know why I just got on MySpace and <laughs> disagreed <laughs> and sent him a message, and uh, went back and forwards from there. And he said, "Oh, I've made a movie called Hatchet." I said, "Oh, really?" And I was like, "I'll go pick it up." And went and picked it up, and um, really liked it and stuff. And um, yeah, then interacted variously over the uh, uh, Fright Fest and a little bit over the internet. Um, but I'll get into that. Yeah, so we're going to be covering those two movies. Adam Green, we're going to be chatting about his biography and back catalogue as oh, well. What I was going to say very quickly, him and Joe Lynch um, are kind of like ambassadors for Fright Fest. So, yeah. like most people who, who listen to this show who go to Fright Fest would have had, yeah, him and Joe haven't been over for quite a few years. Um, a couple, uh, a little, well, a little while, I think now. Um, maybe, but maybe they used to stuff, but... back in the day, like yearly almost sort of thing yeah. um, so a lot of older fans uh, of Fright Fest and listeners of this show would know probably have chatted to them both as well and Joe Lynch is also a very nice fella too but him and Adam are both good chaps so it'd be a good chat two good films to talk about um, obviously Bill Murray is he's arrived early actually he's taking a shower upstairs so I'm not sure why fucking but, uh, Bill why does he need to take a shower did he cycle what is it? why is he is he smelly he's, he's taking a shower upstairs and he's been up there for about 45 minutes and I haven't even heard the water running yet what is so, Bill Murray doing up in the toilet I think he might have blocked the toilet we'll have to see uh, but he's here and he's got a list of things that's all he's revealed to me so far so that'll be more of the strange later on okay but yeah, that's what that's what's going on for episode 140. But Gavin, my mm. friend, my dear okay. sweet bearded brother, how are you? What have you been doing? What's going on in your life? What have you been watching? Uh, um, I'm very well, thank you very much. Uh, what's been going on? Uh, well, today I took so hopefully, listeners, I'm going to be focused today. Today I got a uh, and I took my first uh, dose of dirty, uh, which is like a lion's mane yeah, mushroom. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Lion's Mane Mushroom uh, uh, supplement thing where you just take a spoonful, put it in a drink, have it daily. And I've got the one which is for focus. Listen, listeners, ready? Yeah. I'm going to focus on my co-host this evening. And when he speaks, I shall stay with it. I shall <laughs> stay with it like a, a, a greyhound on a rabbit. A whip it on a rabbit. That's how I'll stay with it. So what he's saying is, dear sweet listeners, is you can expect even more tangents because Gav's brain will be firing off on all cylinders yes, and it, he'll be going down got, loads of rabbit holes. I've got the mushroom stuff, which is focus, concentration, 
and digestion. So we must we must say it's not dodgy mushrooms, though, guys. He's not tripping balls right now. No, it's not hallucinogenics. No, this no. is a this is a very expensive thing. Which uh, I don't know. I'm trying to out though, just because uh, I have days where I struggle with with brain fog. I don't know if other people get that as well, but I do. Um, so. Uh, yeah, the focus is good. So what have I been doing? Um, uh, I was with Sarah at the weekend. We've been still going on a sort of shallow binge, watching a few movies, Scorpion's Tale or something, Curse of Scorpion's Tale or something like that. Uh, a few few of those films, they were good. Oh, I'll tell you one which I really enjoyed. Strip Nude for her, for your killer, Lucio Fulci. Great title. It's, I love the titles of Jello movies. It's pretty sleazy. It's, imagine what, you can imagine what it's like and thoroughly enjoyed it. Really liked it, actually. Um did watch one you know that island of death which she recommended me which sarah and i fucking loved and, we, and you and i have to cover that movie at some point indeed the director also did another movie called i will have to look it up it has george kennedy in it it wasn't as good though which i was okay. quite gutted with um because um, yeah. I actually noticed this director, Nico Mastorokaius. Oh, fucking hell, I'll butcher in that name. I think it's like a Greek name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he has done actually a few movies which sound okay, like the names of them and things. And after Island of Death, and I was just like, I was blown away by Island of Death. Oh, he done one called Hide to Kill 1990. And do you know who it stars? Go on then. Brian Thompson. Oh, we love Brian Thompson on this podcast. You know, Brian Thompson. Night- Nightmare at Noon is what I watched, and it just wasn't as good. It should have been. I'm going to show you the tr- picture now for it. Oh, yeah. That looks good. Yeah, it should have been better than it was, but um, it was okay. It wasn't too bad. Um, apart from that, I've just been uh, working away editing um, uh, a new Deadbolt film, which will be coming out, well... I don't know what's, where it's going to go at the moment. It was a discussion. Um, I've been doing that. I sent you a bit. Did you like that little bit? Yes, indeed, I did. And, uh, and then that I'm looked really I'm, brutal and it's completely I'm gonna silent. Mention, I'm going to mention one word. Yeah. And this hopefully this isn't a spoiler. Chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, uh, and a clown. Um, yeah, and a big bet. And just, I don't know, it's, it was filmed like two years ago and it's just never been cut. Now Ben's on in Deadbolt Films with us. Um, I've just been cutting it for him and stuff, and we're going to get that out. But he wants it. He wants it to try and be like a, a show, because like a series sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's really good. It looks amazing. It looks incredible. So just the shot that is now just putting it together. So doing that really, working on that. What have you been doing? Uh, well, my children have been sick for weeks. Um, Poonami in my house. Isn't that amazing. So, um, diarrhea for ten days straight. It, it, um, the, the best thing is, see, you've got twins, so I don't know this, but the best thing is, like, they do it, and and it's, oh, God, and there's, you've got to go wash stuff, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm running out of sheets, and I'm running out of stuff, but you've yeah. got it twice, so are yeah. you just all of a sudden being, like, washing machine on constantly? Yes, yes. Yes. I remember we've, those we've days. Actually, we've actually thrown away, like, well, I mean, they're growing out, because they grow so fast, they're three in a few months, um, so I've actually just thrown away some of the stuff, and I've been putting them in their older clothes, but I'm pleased to report the last couple of days have been solid poos, I know our listeners are really <laughs> to know uh, my children's um, bowel movements, so yeah, solid poos the last couple of days, uh, the thing is, they haven't been ill, they've just had this like tum- tummy bug, they've not lost their appetite, they've not had temperatures, you know, everything else has been normal, apart from the fact that every 45 minutes one of them shits themselves. Um, you know, and nappies are great. It's like, it's like me, you, me and you podcast, isn't it? It's me and you. Um, it's, nappies are great, but there's only so much a nappy can hold, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I was watching this thing the other day on, on Facebook, and it's just like one of these random fucking videos, and it's just like, tips you should do on holiday. And one of them was just putting all your possessions, your wallet, your keys, your passport, inside a nappy, folding it all up. That's a good idea. No was that, yeah? There. You could do it and go even one more, though, couldn't you? You could actually get some chocolate mousse <laughs> and have it on there. And then it could be like, we're not going anywhere near that. Smell some, spray some fart smell on there. <laughs> fart before, in a can. Well, you've just reminded me of a good story. Before I um, tell you what I've been watching, um, which is, I've only been what, really watched one thing. That's why, because my children have been pooing a lot. But um, I, my first shared house when I was about 24... We had a bit of a poo prank wars going on in there. Um, one of the guys was so good at the poo pranks. And uh, one of the things he did, I had a pair Involving of... Involving actual shit. No, no, but 
um, okay. one, of the, one of the things he did to me was I had a pair of white Calvin Klein boxer shorts because, you know, it, it was back in the day. Oh, he did a fake, a fake pooey, did he? Well, what happened was I put my whites in the washing machine and went out down the pub. And when I came back, I brought a girl home. And <laughs> and I was chatting to her in the kitchen, hanging up my laundry, you know, a bit drunk. And then I pulled this pair of white Calvin Klein box shorts out, not knowing that he'd got home before me and smeared chocolate all on the inside of the crotch. So I pulled these out and then looked down and my eyes almost popped up my head. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, is it like a cartoon? I thought, I don't even remember having skidders. Like, what what's happened? How did I get skid marks? So I shoved them in the machine and just assumed that it, I'd forgotten to wipe properly but the next day he revealed to me it was him that had done done the prank we this went backwards and forwards for about a year it was brilliant have you seen that episode of the it crowd when he's at, sitting at a date it starts off him at a date with the woman it's poo on the fingers no it's on his head oh, that's right and uh she, she go she literally does the whole meal everything gets in the taxi gets the end and she's like oh sh- 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 can i come in and she's like no, I, I, I wanted to say this the whole time for you, but you've got a shit on your head. He's like, yeah. what? I've got shit on my head. And then Nick says, oh, it's mousse. It's chocolate mousse. It's like, fucking hell, man. There's an episode of um, Extras, the Ricky Gervais show, yeah. where um, Stephen Merchant brings a girl home back to his apartment, and it's really romantic. He cooks her a lovely meal, and they're having a great time, and you know they're really falling for each other. And then he goes off to his bathroom, and he's gone for about 45 minutes and then he steps out and he gets a whisk and he says to her i'm just gonna have to use this whisk because it, i'm gonna have to try and break sort of chop oh, it up a bit oh, to flush it away god use a and toilet brush he says i think i'll put a plastic bag over it oh, and then dude. he goes and while he's while he's in there and you can hear all this sort of splashing she just she gets up quietly gets her coat on and leaves did you tell me was it on a world of strange we done on here uh, that woman that uh, was on a date or whatever with her boyfriend at their place went for a shit but yeah. then put it out the window she got stuck she 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 didn't want him to know that oh no it she, wouldn't flush she'd know she, yeah so she took it out threw it out the window then it got stuck, it got stuck between in between two. the two panes of window. So she then so she had a sh- smeary shit slowly. Go, yeah, but then she reached through to try and get it and got her arm stuck. Yeah, and and then the fire brigade had to come and rescue her. How does it? What happens then? Do you? Like, Are you all right, Jane? You've been uh, in there two hours. Right, F- Fred, you're gonna have to break the door down, but be prepared. I'm stuck with my hand in the window trying to grab a shit out. I don't know if you want another date, but we could talk about it later. Right now, I just need the fire brigade. Then there's that classic... I don't worry around a massive shit. It's not the shit podcast. Then there's that classic scene in Trainspotting when he wakes up in the morning. And he's like, Can I, I'll just put the uh, oh, shits yeah, in yeah. the wash. Amazing. And he just flicks them out. It goes over everyone. I mean, poo is funny, isn't it? It's not funny at the time. It isn't. It smells horrible, but you can, but make, you can, you can have funny gags with it. Yeah, it's funny later on down the line. Um, the only film I've been watching which isn't shit, <coughs> despite what critics have been saying, now it's just, the only reason I'm going to bring this up really is because it touches again on a topic that we've discussed, which is how um, toxic the internet is really when a film is announced. Straight away, you get people saying, well, that looks shit. I could have done written something better in my sleep. You know, and it, it just really not depresses me but it just really saddens me that that's the way the world is back in our day rear dooms human race we didn't even know that film was coming out until we saw a trailer or you know a poster at a cinema so i'm talking about marvel the marvels the new marvel film okay um hit disney plus i didn't get to see it in the cinema because of various things um i was really gutted but it came out it's got three women in the lead um a, a pakistani woman um a black lady and a white lady straight away as soon as the first trailers dropped well marvel are going woke can't they and it's like oh for god's sake really what because they've got three women and some of them aren't white in the lead and and, str- and people have just been ripping into this from the very announcement of its production all the way through to its release i watched it it was one of the best marvel films in the last couple of years and actually all the critics since it came out have gone very quiet because it's actually a pretty good film but i watched the marvels it was a hell of a lot of fun uh if anybody hasn't seen it it's now on disney plus you know my thoughts on the marvel films so i like i like i liked it if they'd done one iron man one one fucking hulk one 
Avengers movie, I'd have been like, that's fucking cool. And then it was just like, <laughs> so that's, I don't really want to talk about it even. Fair enough. But Zero I fucking interest. Uh, I personally think that they have fucking lost it. And it's a bit of a, like, we don't know what to do now. Not saying that that's what they're doing now, but it's, it's the same with Disney and the Star Wars. It's kind of like they were both towering giants yeah. and they have kind of just this is me from an outside perspective not being really a uh, I am a Star Wars fan but not a superhero fan apart from I do like the characters the original well, characters Star Wars have with. taken a break um, they've got a new movie coming out in the next couple of years but they decided to take a break they haven't released a film for, a, for quite a few years they've obviously got a few Disney Plus series Marvel are doing a similar thing they've only got one film coming out this year which is Deadpool 3 or as it was revealed That's good. today it's called Deadpool and Wolverine but that movie is going to fix a lot of the issues that people are annoyed with because it's going to bring together it, all it, these Spider-Man, X-Men stuff and it's oh, going to cool. fix it all. There's actually a line in the film. I imagine men Reynolds. like Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds. He is, yeah. Ryan Reynolds is a, a thing men will look at and go, he's look at that body and women will also look at and go, oh, look at that body, you know. Also, he's got a mouth like a sailor on him. And it, you know, it, and it, it fits it's for funny. A, a male look at things, you know. There's a line in the trailer because everybody's been saying that this film is going to fix Marvel. Hmm. Not that I think there's much wrong with it, but there has been a few blips. But he actually says at one point, some, they say to him, you need to go on this mission to go through all the different multiverses and fix it. And he says, oh, I get what you're saying. I'm Marvel Jesus. Okay, right. So, that could do fun. it if you keep kind of still with the fan base a little bit and keep it a little bit grounded and not just go a bit too fucking... It's like you don't need to. They've been dominating cinema for like, what, 20 years now? 15, 20 yeah. years? And it's kind of like, you don't need to be pushing this stuff out constantly. I know there's a fan base. That fan base will wait and will wait and want something if you leave it longer. Let it grow. You, you only need two movies a year, yeah, if that's, not one. And that's why know. I really started disliking them from a... Uh, from an audience member and a movie maker, um, a filmmaker, just just like, you know, it's just kind of like, I don't know what you're doing. And it's kind of like, please stop. It's almost like they might have even started like this juggernaut train or whatever, and they couldn't stop it once it started going. They're like, fuck, we've got, you know, we've, we're have doing this phase one, phase two, phase fucking 330, fucking five. Well, the way I see it is... Um I grew up reading the comics, so I'm always yeah, a yeah. fan. I'm always happy in the comics back in the day. If I was reading a Spider-Man comic and Wolverine showed up, Black I still love Spider-Man. It was great, yeah. uh, and I love it when they do this. And I do love the crossovers, but they yeah. do need they do need more quality over quantity. That, that's it. That's it. And I would probably still be with it if it was more because I really love that first movie. I was like, oh, really good. Then by Avengers three or four, whatever it was, I don't. I could have watched it, and you could have literally a minute later, what happened? <sighs> stuff big explosions fuck those yeah. you know but you know cool. it is what it is and everything comes to an end and hopefully this will be a better way for them to go on yeah so. well they're, they're bringing in um, they're redoing X-Men and they're redoing Fantastic Four yeah. in the way that they probably should have done so they, they've got a new chapter coming up and I think yeah. I think they've learnt the lesson from the last two years. But yeah. also, I think they suffered with COVID, you know. COVID oh, yeah, but really... so did, yeah, but so did everybody. Of course, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll I I tell think... you what, Adam Green especially, and no, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, uh, well, but I never wanted to shit on Marvel films because I know you're such a fan. Um, so I always felt bad when I sort of uh, disapprovingly talked about them. The thing is, I, I know that you don't... It's not that you don't like them. You just don't really have the time... For, for the amount of yeah, content I, there is, I, which I, is fine. Yeah, that's. I think that's what my fear of everything is: is content. If something like if as my favorite artist, and then they start banging out three albums a year, I'm gonna be like, oh, I, I liked one album, but you're not. I want to linger on something so I can rewatch it or re-listen to it and really love that. What that's so good, I love that. And like as a kid, I'd rewatch Rambo. <laughs> over and over you know yeah so it'd be nice to have that sort of feeling again but we are in a world where there's fucking uh, a movie popping up on amazon or whatever every second so it's of crazy degrees of no li literally no budget to you know oh yeah the only other thing i watched is uh, a documentary which is about a year old now maybe even older but i've been meaning to watch it actually i think it only came out a few months ago it's called the hatchet wielding hitchhiker i'm sure most of you've seen it um, what the famous it? hatchet wielding. No, no, no. Sorry, what, 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 what is it, a short film, feature film? It's a documentary, a real documentary. Uh, oh, the, it was a fucking dude. The Kai, the Bash, surfer. Bash, yeah, Bash. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I kind of knew the story. My wife didn't, yeah, so we yeah, watched yeah. it together, and um, I knew where it was going to go. And it, it, he was a character. You, could, you couldn't have written that. You know, if that was a film, you'd say that plot is unbelievable. But the fact that he kills that guy at the end, and there's lots of sort of male rape implications in it, and plus he's such a weird stoner guy. He's like every member of Jackass rolled into one human. He's just uh, felt, a very strange person. I felt sorry for him, I think. At the time. I do I feel sorry for him. Um, I think he's just kind of like, uh, yeah. I can't remember what it was now. I've, I've talked he, about he, it before. He's very, um, I think he's very, a lot, of, a lot of mental health stuff that's gone on unchecked. Mm. And because he was allowed to roam as a, a nomad or a homeless person, as whatever he wants to call himself, you know, he made up a lot of stories about his childhood and the abuse that he did or didn't suffer. And I, yeah, the I, guy, the I guy's he head did. just isn't screwed on. He's in prison now, and uh, that's it. You know, you killed, the, um, killed someone. There's a dude on Instagram that puts Arnold Schwarzenegger's face on uh, different things, and he's actually put him on him. So it's Arnold with his voice. It's blash, blash, blash. Amazing. Uh, yeah. For anyone that doesn't know, uh, it's on Netflix UK now, but it's about um, that viral guy that went it went viral because he basically saved someone by bashing another guy's head in with a machete. He didn't kill that guy, but he bashed his head in enough to save the person that he was trying to strangle. But it's a, it's a bit insane. And then, and then three months. But he was interviewed then. Uh, since that happened, he's interviewed and he had like a cool, uh, just the, the one thing where he's looking, and he starts, then goes on something, but you've got to believe in yourself, man. If you don't think, and starts going into like some fucking thing, and it really made people interested with him. He's a very pretty boy, and he can sing and play the guitar, and because he's kind of this weird, crazy, he, homeless nomad. He, if if he had had his uh, uh, faculties of the elves, he's like saying not correct there, he could have been a cult leader. He really could have done. Well, basically, within three months of that video going viral, he ended up in prison for murder of somebody else. So, yeah, it's a crazy ride. Worth checking out. Yeah, um, Netflix have got a few good true crime stuff. Good like that. But that's it. That's <laughs> it for me. Um, so, Adam Green. Shall we have a little breather and then come back and get into Mr. Green and discuss? <laughs> Ooh. Not like that, Adam. Uh, and talk about what he's been doing how he got started and then get into his first of our two films we're covering okay let's do it let's do it here we are we're um, here to discuss adam green uh so uh, i did uh, I kind of feel like I know, I feel like I'm an ambassador for Adam Green and Joe Lynch, to be honest with you. Um, I know quite a lot of them. So most people who have listened to their show. Um, Adam's actually a very nice fellow. When I actually uh, had a bit of a marriage breakdown and stuff, um, I knew he had already done it because of his podcast. And I actually reached out to him and he sent me a couple of big mess- uh, emails. Um, and uh, it was good. The, the first email sent me, I actually read quite a few times because I was in that sort of place when um, you don't know what to do and you kind of just pull in from anywhere. And at the time, listening to his podcast, I was like, I'm going to reach out to him. And he's nicely got back to me. Um, uh, funny enough, though, I do have a really f- a funny time. Whenever I see Adam Green in the uh, um, Fright Fest, I end up having some awkward situation. The last thing he said to me was, like, are you going to go watch the next movie? Because he's outside. And I misheard him. And I thought he said, how was the last movie? And I went, yeah, it's all right. And he just kind of looked at me weirdly. And we just kind of looked at each other <laughs> a bit weirdly. And I went... And then someone said, he asked you if you're going to go watch it. And I was like, ah, yeah. So I have one of these things because I, that's just me. Um, and multiple people actually who go to Fright Fest. I sort of end up sending a message saying, sorry, I didn't chat to you. I was having, and I kind of looked at you a bit weird. I was just having a bit of a weird moment and didn't want to. I'm a bit better nowadays. I've been going for so many years. I know so many people. But, um, but yeah, back to Adam. Um, he started um, Aeroscope Pictures with uh, his friend, um, the director of photography, Will Barrett who shoots all of his movies apart from Victor Crowley, I think, the fourth or fifth? The fourth, that's the fourth, fourth hatchet, hatchet movie, Because yeah. um, um, he wasn't available at the time. Um, and they started that um, uh, as a thing. Because Adam first made a movie called Coffee and Donuts for, I don't know, six, seven hundred quid or seven thousand quid. I don't know, a dollar, sorry. And um, he, uh, it was just shot like... Um, 
um, tape to tape, he cut it and it was shot on whatever it was shot on, and the music was spliced onto it so he couldn't take it off. So you never, no one's ever seen that movie because of the copyright, because obviously he couldn't get the release for the songs. And uh, this was the year 2000, listeners, just so you're aware of the timeline. So yeah, he's I, been I, in I the game for a long time. Mm, you know. I don't know the timeline, but he, he had that movie and I think he showed it to people. And um, I think he always wanted to be a filmmaker, so he went to Hollywood, um, well, LA. Um, I guess with Will I see I might be com- I'm not completely with all this I might be a little bit out anyway um, they wanted to make a movie and Hatchet was the first film they came about and they, I think I, oh, I might be wrong here I feel like they shopped it around the thing is with Adam and Will starting Aeroscope Pictures they've done kind of like what uh, Robert Rodriguez has done with Troublemaker Studios mm-hmm. and um, kind of just working outside the Hollywood um, you know, yeah. kind of more on the fringe of it a little bit, but still being able to be a Hollywood player. Similar in some ways to Eli Roth a little bit, how he started his career. He was a little bit outsider and But but not well, that, not like that. Like Adam's actually started like the studio he's made, he writes all of his own scripts and gets the they produce produce the funding for their films. Do you know what I mean? Where, where um, is that like a whole? They you use a whole lot all the time. But obviously, uh, Eli Ross gonna gonna have different productions behind him for different films. Well, he certainly started like that, but he so quickly, you know, found a different type of success. Whereas I think Adam likes to have more control. Both That's from why Boston. He writes direct. Yes, they are. Mm. Um, which I, Adam likes to have more control, which is why he writes, directs, and assists with editing and everything else that comes with it, producing, you know, etc. And even acts. You uh, know, Adam it, Adam actually doesn't edit very much, actually. Um, but yeah, does act in it. Uh, funny enough, he actually saw what they had seen, what uh, um, Eli did with Cabin Fever. Saw that and went, oh, okay, we can make a movie like, like. Funny enough, I, I did when I saw like Planet Terror and Death Proof. I was like, fuck it, we can make a movie, you know, and did Shadow of Death. Um, and he saw that and said, oh, this guy's from where we're from, he can make a movie. And that's why they tried to do Hatchet. And they did obviously end up making Hatchet and um, did a really good job. Of it. It's a really good movie. You got Robert. 2006. You got Robert England in it for his first film and um, Kane Hodder. Yep, Kane Hodder. And it's like fucking hell. That's that's. And cool. then they're two big names to get in your first real feature. Yeah, you know totally. I mean? And I think it's really good. Like it, it, it just jumped out of that thing with doing that whole sort of slasher film. I, funny enough, I kind of did the same with Shadow of Death. I was trying to make that eighty slasher film when we did it, and you were like Officer Craven in it and shit like that. It was a homage to that, homage to that. I think uh, Adam was probably doing the same with Hatchet series, and it's like. All those movies, Halloween. Tony Todd, he got Tony Todd in oh, it as well, actually, didn't it, he as well? Yeah, exactly. Look, Kane Hodder, Tony Todd, and Robert England in your first film. Fuck me. And and Hatchet was really um, em- embraced by the horror community. Well, we've got like this Hatchet army, which really like it. Now it has got to the point when um, cause, um he made the other films. He had a massive problem with Hatchet Two when it came out because the American uh, uh, Board of Certification, or whatever. They were just like, like, no, fuck that, you've got to take out some gore. And I think that was on the day it was going to be in the cinemas, and it just caused problems. Also, you've got like, the fans that keep saying, oh, we want another Hatchet, we want another Hatchet, like, let's have Hatchet 5 and that stuff. But he's to the point of, like, fuck off, like, because you get the producers, not to the fans, to the producers. The producers say, like, hey, we want to, uh, uh, um, why don't you make a movie? Let's have a look at the budget from your last film. And they sort of show it, and they say, look, we did this budget with doing favours. Like, you know, I would probably directed it for free. I don't want to do that. If we're doing this, we need proper money, because all the Hatchet movies have made merchandise and sold loads of copies and made loads of money. But he's never seen a penny. He's been totally fucked by uh, uh, the distribution companies and stuff like that. And it's really actually to the point where it's now, we're right this moment where Adam Green is now, he's kind of a bit like... You know, fuck this shit a little bit. Um, like I was saying with COVID, he had a movie which is planned to do with, um, produced by uh, Christopher Columbus's company. You know, like Home Alone, Christopher Columbus. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, it was, I was like, a dude that hunts monsters and there's a pizza delivery guy or something like that. And it's going to be a series of stuff. And then COVID hit. Uh, and he would have probably just that probably pushed him into the sort of more mainstream a bit more and like giving him a bit more of that passion back for that sort of stuff but yeah he's just been pushed down at quite a lot from um, the whole Hatchet series I think but he's done other films as well yeah and you know personally you, I feel with the Hatchet movies you can feel that the love isn't quite there for the last couple um, it's almost like 
although it's still got his fingerprints all over it, you can feel the studio's pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Well, believe... well it's his studio. It's, it's the outside producer. Sorry, not his studio, the producer, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe the fourth one, which is Vince Crowley, was was that filmed in secret and then yeah, um, um, no one knew that it was going to be a hatchet movie? No, no, he didn't. No, no, he did, uh, did that. And he also, with Digging Up the Marrow, funny enough, I mean, he did a really good thing of that with the artist Alex Parday, Par, Par something. Really good, amazing artist. Teamed up with him. They kept that kind of secret and they just actually went around and toured that film and sold tickets and did that kind of you know, old school sideshow type thing, you know, tour around your picture and show it. And rather than going the old school route, um, because of, I think he's just been fucking pushed down by like downloading and, uh, um, and the trouble is with Adam as well. He's the sort of person who wears his heart on his sleeve and he, and having a podcast, you do get to say a lot and people get to know you and stuff. And I, I think people have probably just, um, you get, you know what it's like fucking the trolls and shit. Yeah, give him shit stuff like that. and I think he's someone who probably takes it to heart a little bit um, and you know just been disgruntled by the whole fucking thing but still probably love to make movies it, and but it, always always getting people to say oh let's make another movie so I can just click it and go yeah let's watch that film and then cool when you can make another one then and it's like oh, come on <laughs> give yeah. me some money but buy it rent it you know um, it's one of those things, but he's made other movies as well. Um, Digging Up Marrows, as, as we're going to get into, was super fun film and obviously concept. Frozen, um, which we're also covering, and that's probably one of his more commercial films. Only in that he had some actors in it that um, you would you would know from outside of horror. Well, fro- fro- uh, Frozen, as we get into, it, so it's just such a great concept. Um, and obviously, then Hatchet Two, um, Hatchet Three, um, Digging Up the Marrow. Victor Crowley was his last sort of main um, sort of big film. And he's but he's got a TV show that he's been producing, um, Holliston. Uh, he produced a, uh, uh, a movie called... Sp- no, he sort of co-directed a movie called Spiral, which he did after he did... Oh, of course, um, the second film he did, yeah. Yeah, he co-directed, funny enough. It's the only movie he's co-directed, and he... Um, I haven't seen it, and he um, did that direct after Hatchet because he didn't want to be... Uh, Top cast as a uh, sort of slasher director, which makes sense to do stuff like you know jump on something else. Um, yeah, quite a lot of shorts. He does do a fun thing every year. He does like a Halloween short film every year. I think they're gonna stop at like thirty one. Um, but yeah, he, he's a he's a dude that loves fucking horror movies. He likes making horror movies, and he's done pretty fucking well for himself. And he should be proud of it, to be honest with you. Yeah, and like I said to you, with him, it's quality over quantity. Yeah. He's not he's not banging out loads of rubbish. Everything he puts out is... He's made a place for himself in the horror fan base. People love him. Mm. Um, he's got a voice, you know. And, he, and you've got to respect the guy that not only directs, but writes as well at the same time. Yeah, you he know? writes the stuff he, di- he directs. Um, like I say, he doesn't really edit, edit so much, as far as I know. Um, but yeah, he, he's done just done pretty well for himself he's a sort of dude that goes to convention you get most conventions most people ask um uh for money for their autographs and uh him and like joe lynch and stuff don't do that um and they and i think that's one reason they really uh took on fright fest and the feeling that fright fest has fright fest isn't a money thing uh it's like purely just fucking horror fans that just want to hang out and mingle we're not we're not cunts we're not trying to do stupid shit mm. and come up to you and say hey I pirated your movie man I fucking love downloading your film mm. you know we're not, we're not doing that um, so I think they, they really enjoyed that I do got to give props to Joe Lynch as well as his sidekick Adam and, Gr- yeah. Adam and Joe are both sidekicks and Joe's a fucking decent guy he even watched watch Sanctuary Moon actually there we go he said it's a good, it's a good movie oh thanks Joe um, so back catalogue we've kind of covered really in that you know there are really six main films. There's a, a ton of short films. Um, we're talking Spiral as well, um, which neither of us have seen, I don't think. But if you want to check out, if you want to get a good idea of him, there's the Hatchet movies, um, Hatchet 1, 2, 3, and then the fourth one, Victor Crowley. Victor Crowley himself is now um, a bit of an icon, much like Freddy and, and Jason, etc. Um, but obviously Frozen, Digging Up the Marrow as well. He's got a style, but the style is hard to pin down what it is. The style is more in his humour. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's got that sort of, uh, I suppose you could say, sort of frat boy humour, I guess, yeah. kind of thing. 
but he also is passionate about what he does and i think that's why his projects are always so people as soon as you say it's uh, adam green's attached to it people want to see it because he is passionate about the genre he's passionate mm. about filmmaking but he's passionate about the horror genre as well um and i'm really excited to talk about these two I, films i think so, if you if you don't know any of these films yeah i'd say go with frozen the hatchet check those two out and you're like, oh, okay cool you know, it's a good indication. Yeah, t- digging at the marrow might not be for everybody. I think you might need to know Adam a bit more, but then he doesn't really play himself no. so much in it. So I, I really enjoyed it because I was at the premiere of uh, digging up paro, uh, uh, digging up the paro, digging up the marrow, digging premiere, my sparrow, digging up my marrow. Oh, I'm not going to get into that. And um, uh, what was I digging up? And um, um, you at the premiere? It. Lost it. Trained it for gone. You're, you're at the premiere. I d- yeah, don't know. Was that the premiere? I think you were probably going to say that it wasn't. You you went into it thinking it was going to be one thing, and it was probably something slightly different. No, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. Uh, we watched it again. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, no, I kind of I, I kind of had an idea of it. I liked I liked the fact that obviously we're going to get into the film, so I'm not going to touch upon it too much now. Um, I like the fact that it's it's him being like, yeah, I'm, uh, this is me, and I'm getting and kind of. It's kind of like how we've done stuff before, occasionally just filming stuff out there. And I sort of did start doing Joseph is Missing, which I'm going to go back to and try to make a feature found footage film now. Did that because it was in COVID. So I was going around and started making a fucking filming myself, trying to do this like sh- series with Tom. Like, and, you know, you've seen bits of it. And it's kind of like doing that. I do like Digo and Marriott's case of like, well, we've got the studio. Let's film the studio. Let's film me on conventions. Let's film me doing this stuff and put that into it. So um, I, I really enjoyed digging up Mario, but um... I mean, I'll say now, to be honest with you, my favourite movie of his is digging up the Marrow. Um, That's interesting, fantastic. But I also think Frozen is awesome as well, and everybody knows great Frozen. Such a simple, my great concept. My, my wife's seen it several times. She said, "Oh, you're watching this one again tonight? Brilliant!" You know, it's um, it's, it's accessible for people. It's yeah. a really what you want. It's a really simple concept. It's three people stuck in a. a, a it's, it's that is what you want. Is your lift, your elevator pitch? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's three people stuck up on a ski slope, thinking they can't get down, and it's but, it's the weekend. But obviously, he's well known for the Hatchet movies as well. Um, you know, and, and they've got the huge following, which we'll get into. You know some of that comes up a little bit in digging at the marrow and someone we know pops up with his tattoos in that as well so um but yes oh, <laughs> old lukey boy shows up there doesn't he uh, yeah i couldn't remember his name actually when we watched it yeah. um but yeah we we love adam green we will always check out anything he does um if you are listening adam you know you do great work but you've been told that a billion times um but yeah we're going to be discussing frozen first so shall we take a little trailer for frozen here yeah let's do make it. sure you make sure you don't pick the wrong one because we don't want to go down the let pixar disney oh, let it go i bet though when when frozen disney frozen came out i bet adam was like it's like yes mother click that oh no yes grandmother click that frozen button by accident and rent funnily, out my film funnily enough my wife said to me he um, must have made some bucks from she that, said from that. Are well, there any other films i say that he might not have made any bucks you know alice said to me are there any other films where there's a kid's film's got the same title as a horror and i said the only other one i can think of we've covered which is jack frost which came out almost the yeah, same yeah, year as, as that michael keaton and i know that in blockbuster videos they accidentally or i say accidentally somebody muddled it up and rented out the horror of film of Jack Frost, and I wonder if anyone's ever done that with the right. kids brought home Frozen. Hopefully, just on. hopefully just the porn parodies. Oh Jesus! What's the porn parody of Frozen? I don't, oh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Lick my ice pop. Uh, I, my dick stuck up. Wow! So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my dick stuck up. Sorry, I did stuck up. What? what? He's dying. I think that's probably a good time for us to go to a trailer. Jesus oh, that's hurt my head. I don't know if this mushroom tea is any good for you. Oh. Right, let's go for a trailer. Are you guys sure about this? Yeah, yeah, it works all the time. All you have to do is go over there and you say, like... I said that I could pay for all three lift tickets and then I left my credit card at the gas station. Right. I totally have money. Just not enough for all three. <laughs> Last run, gotta make it Oh, 
we're gonna die. Oh my god! Oh my god! I don't wanna die of you! Help! Frozen from 2010, rated 15, hour and 33 minutes. Nice and quick, get in there, get out. Ooh. Three skiers stranded on a uh, chairlift are forced to make life or death choices, which prove more per perilous than staying put and freezing to death. Sorry, I didn't say that very uh, poetically. That's all right. At least um, you didn't wrap it. No, but but basic premise, like I said earlier, it's three people on a chairlift and it's the weekend and everyone's gone home and they're stuck. It's like the most shitty situation. Dan, have you ever been on a ski slope? No, I've never never gone skiing. I've never done dry ski slope or, or anything like that. Um, I know that uh, Adam Green had never set foot on a, um, a ski slope until uh, he made this movie. What the hell is that? Fuck nice. Let's just carry on. I know that Adam Green had never set foot on a ski uh, resort or a ski slope until he made this movie. And I also know he's got an incredible, or did have at least, an incredible fear of heights. So this was probably quite cathartic for him to write and direct, uh, particularly because the chairlift that they shot everything in was actually very high up in the air. Obviously, all very, very safety conscious, not guerrilla filmmaking style. But um, no, I've never done any sort of skiing. Have you ever been skiing? Yeah, no, I've been snowboarding. Uh, I've been on a, a, in Andorra, which is between, uh, I think, France and Italy. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Um, uh, went out there snowboarding. Um, it's weird, because I've got a bunch of friends who love snowboarding and go out snowboarding and stuff. And they're like, come out. I was like, okay, cool, because I'm a skater. And um, it's weird, though. It's, it's, it's a strange thing. You go to a place, and you're kind of stuck, stuck there with everyone else. It's a very youth mentality. There's loads of little pubs everywhere. Uh, there's one which was like this this got tech and it was like something out of like so it's all black shiny and it's like what the fuck like a proper disco tech it was stuff like that. and just there's just loads of people getting pissed everywhere at night times but then snowboarding in the daytime and it's just that like a real party f thing um i went with my 25th birthday um it was all right it's a bit weird though skateboarding i like uh, having trucks and wheels underneath me when you got a snowboard like, that's taken away so you can feel the floor you can feel the ground you know Hmm. And uh, I, I couldn't, I just didn't completely get into it. It was, it was okay. Um, a buddy of mine broke his arm like the first day. Yeah, I know. I've got a friend who loves snowboarding, um, and he saved up loads of money. And him and his girlfriend oh, went, what happened? went snowboarding. The first day there, he tried to grind uh, a, a rail, and he he he's shattered his coccyx or. He did something to his coccyx, so he basically couldn't walk. Probably not so, the first day he started jumping on rails. It was Well, I mean, he's, a, he's an experienced snowboarder. Oh, but, okay, fair enough. But he just decided, I think he was showing off to his girlfriend, and yeah, he, the first day there he fractured the base of his spine, basically. Look, he, could, he could walk around with the walking sticks and stuff, and it's obviously healed up, but... Yeah, what's snowboarding again? What a waste of money going there for two weeks, when all you can do is fucking lie there. Yeah, my buddy, my buddy ended up, I ended up lending him the money to get his arm cast you know terrible um it's like fuck dude so he can do anything he can still beat us at pool he beat <laughs> everybody at pool yeah um, it's weird that's a weird week my, my mate <clears throat> my mate john's it doesn't matter to say his name he um there's a group there a group of uh european people just were being real bastards they had electric shocker <clears throat> and they're trying oh, to have fights at night times and uh, one one night they were all getting ready for their coach to leave the next morning. We'd been up drinking. Uh, cause I think it's my birthday. So it's about four in the morning. John's went down there, took all his clothes off and just put a sock on his genital area. Went down there and from the staircase stood there. I went to watch. I wish I had a camcorder and filmed it. Went to watch. He just stood there and said, come on then. And challenged everyone. Everyone waiting for the coach. Why? Naked to fight them. And he said, <coughs> see, you won't do it. And they were just like, oh, what the fuck? 
It's like, whoa, dude. <laughs> wow. Calm down. Yeah. Well, luckily, there's no cock socks in this movie. There isn't, now, actually. There isn't. This movie is notorious because uh, it's one of those ones, like you say, Gav, it's very accessible um, because it's not a strict horror movie. It's more of the situation. Yeah, it's like, like, like the reason I love Devil. Uh, there's yeah, a group exactly. of people stuck in an elevator. Mm. You know where they are, what's going on. It's you, Your brain doesn't need to go a million places. It's just there. It's simple. But I like simplicity. Simplicity yeah. works. And this falls into the category of your phone booth, your, your buried, Absolutely. Absolutely. Your, your devil. You know, those, place, those movies that <clears throat> for 90% of the movie, you're smaller. stuck in one location. Yeah, real smaller and, though. And most recently and brilliantly done was full. Um, where she climbed, the her and her mate climbed to the top of the same, tower. That was fantastic. Yeah. Even you're sort of 37 meters down, where you're trapped in a shark cage. All of these things that probably cost a lot more because you're underwater filming and there's sharks, etc. But but yeah, the it's one of these ones where the premise is enough to make people talk. Have you seen the movie about the three people trapped in a stair? It, 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 it makes you, know. you want to go watch the film. Yeah, and then and then it inspires conversation. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Me and my wife, my wife watched this with me. She loves this movie. She's watched it a few times. Although she always finishes with like, oh, I'm really anxious now. I need to watch something else. And it is quite anxiety inducing. You know, uh, I've probably seen this movie about six times now. It's definitely the most viewed Adam Green movie that I've seen. But it's brilliantly done, and because it's it's quantity over qu- uh, quality over quantity because there's not many cast in it he's made sure he's picked three actors who i consider all very good at what they do um there's a handful of people sort of extras including mr kane hodder uh, briefly in this and adam himself and his ex-wife and a few other people pop up will barrett's in it as well um i think it's joe in it as well i'm not sure if joe's in adam it. joe and the uh they're the they're, they're, the, 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 they're uh, the ski lift the behind lift. Saying, saying the lift. <laughs> so dude what the fuck yeah yeah um so but for the most part it's the three main actors sean ashmore that which most people would know talking of marvel earlier as Iceman from the x-men movies in the 90s oh really i don't uh, i don't know i don't think i've seen them and then you've got Emma Bell and you've got <clears throat> Kevin Zegers. And these are the three buddies. So I think they're very well cast. Yeah, um, and they're pretty... You they're need, pretty <laughs> it's one of those things. If you're going to have uh, uh, a movie of any length, really, uh, over an hour uh, of just a few people stuck in one place and you're stuck with those people because it's you know films like this is like like uh, Rope, you know, uh, Hitchcock's Rope and stuff like that. Um, not saying you could do this in one take, but you could potentially take this to a stage and uh, make a play out of this. That's true. Um, uh, and I like that. But if you're going to have this situation, a very small, tight, tight place and real tight knit situation where it's going to be a lot of character driven uh, performances going on here, you got to have the right casting. If you've got the wrong casting and you're just like, oh, I can't get this movie, pff, your, your, your interest going, you're fucking li- bit, you're lost. And if even one of these people didn't work, then yeah, yeah, but, but it's, the di- it's the dynamic between the three of them. So essentially the setup is you've got two best friends. One of them's now got a girlfriend and they've gone on a ski trip. But we'll get into that when we get into the story. But the way it works so well, because you truly feel these two dudes have been friends for years and years and years. And obviously he really likes his new girlfriend and there's this whole dynamic so there's this whole like third wheel thing going on as well i haven't um i know obviously sometimes it's hard to find the time in prep to uh do uh um uh rehearsals and stuff but like this dynamic i don't actually know a massive i've got a dvd and i should have really watched behind the scenes but um i don't really know the sort of the dynamic of what's going on with these characters but i wonder if it's a case of like right let's get you guys together and just like do you guys just want to you know as you would now make just your own whatsapp out. group yeah and you guys just get together go watch the movies go get stoned together go fucking get drunk together go uh you know get mm. them in different situations maybe go do something a little bit more scary go fucking water rapid riding or fucking whatever yeah uh just to get that that thing so when you get on set you've got this camaraderie and you've got this thing going on so like you can take that script but it just flows with a natural presence more and the only awkwardness is actually there on purpose which is the fact that you know joe 
Sean Ashmore's character is a little bit wary of this new girlfriend because she's kind of coming into the his little twosome he's got with his best mate and she's almost co- she literally comes between them she's sat in between them and the, but that's supposed to be there that awkwardness you know is it, so Sean's called uh, Sean Ashmore's mm. Joe Lynch obviously is Adam's friend Joe Lynch and uh, the other guy Dan Walker um, I actually know Dan Walker he lives around the corner from me and I've actually the name Dan Walker comes up so often I was working not long ago as a TV place uh, where all the news uh, is shown live news and there's a guy there called Dan Walker this has nothing to do with anything I'm just saying oh, there we go <laughs> so any Dan Walkers out there please become a patron to our podcast I guess so <clears throat> well let's get into Frozen then so Princess Elsa has got my, oh sorry no I'm reading the wrong um, no I took go. the wrong um, yeah um, yeah, let's get into it. So I, I, we, I remember watching Frozen in the cinema. Actually, the uh, the uh, Disney one, and going, "Fuck, it's a musical!" My daughter has just discovered it and absolutely loves it. I didn't realize. Oh, really? Oh my god! I'm glad I, my children are way past that. Um, so th- I must say that at times there is a slight, not not in a bad way, there is a little bit of a destina- final destination vibe here and there. Whenever you see the mechanics of the ski lift shown up close and things like that, uh, I, I it's nice actually. Um, I really like these little insert shots at the beginning, uh, just showing us the mechanics close up of it, and it's just. It's kind of put in uh, uh, a daunting aspect. It's almost like a Final Destination type tip. That's what I mean. It's like, it's got that Final Destination vibe. It's because setting a tone. It, it's fate. You, you, and also, these three are putting their hands in the life of this. Just basically some mechanics, some gears and some ropes and some cables. Mm. Um, you know, and it's chair lift, a ski, ski lifts are very flimsy. I have been really. on one. And, uh, 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 yeah, coming off it was shit. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I fell off. I like Have you seen that track. video, that viral video of the yeah, one that it goes, goes wrong, crazy? Yeah, and they're yeah. all smashing into each other like 20, 25 miles an hour, just crashing into each other. Yeah. Wow, people are diving off of them, aren't they? Uh, one thing of this movie, which you got to be uh, got to give fucking a, a round of applause for, is it shot on location. Yes, yeah. There's no green screens or blue screens. It is shot on location up a mountain or halfway up a mountain up in the air as well mm. so when they look cold they probably are quite cold as well you know obviously everyone's taken care of but um yeah no and it looks great for that well, like uh, hand jobs yeah everyone's taken care of with a good hand job also later on when we bring the wolves in you know they didn't skimp on that they brought in some real wolves and i know they that's only some, had them for two days but some good looking wolves yeah, yeah, they're you know. big and scary there's one one of the fellas was like he's a big fucker yeah there's you wouldn't want to fuck with those guys <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is a this is a bit like we covered recently, Sorcerer. This is a your situation is only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse, and that's it's, what happens to these guys. Yeah, it's not it's, you're not going to make a, a rom com out of this situation, you no. know. Yeah, possibly. I don't know, but nah, I don't know. Not. Well, yeah, let's kiss so, and our faces get stuck together, society ooh. style, frozen society. <laughs> So we, we meet Joe and we meet Parker and we meet Dan and uh, Dan and, and Parker are, have been together for about a year as a couple and Joe and Dan have been best friends for many, many years, probably since they were tiny at kindergarten or, or they, they, Well, he does, he does reminisce, doesn't he, in the later yeah. half of the movie about his uh, childhood with him. And we we get some fun stuff because this is fun. There's some funny bits in this as well, you know, and, and we start off with really seeing these three planning how they're going to get... They're going to blag their way onto the ski lift. Well, it's something they've done before, isn't it? Yeah. Because... And basically... Only because... I, the, well, they, no, they plan on doing it, don't they? But then, obviously, they have a... Have they a have a lady with them this time. Yeah, well, they have an issue. The, right per, the wrong person's there to give, them, to give the bucks to. Yeah, because uh, Joe, he flirts with one of the women that usually is what the attendant who so lets people can on. generally normally go like, here's 50 bucks, because apparently he does, I only give 50 bucks normally, I think, to that particular person. Let us on, sneaky sort of thing, you know. But instead, we've got just some random dude who looks like he, he won't take shit from anyone. He just looks like he wants to go home, drink beer, jerk off, you know, eat a cheeseburger. 
So they cool. send they send Parker over. They undo her top for her so that her cleavage is showing, and they give her a hundred bucks. And they say, "Start at 50. She doesn't really want to do it. No, but she feels like, "Well, okay, we'll do it." So basically, they want to get like a really cheap trip up to the mountain on this ski lift. So over she goes. And she says, you know, my, me and my girlfriends, you know, we've left our purses in, in the restaurant. And he's like, I'll lose my job. He doesn't care. He's like, I'll just lose my job. She's like, oh, please, please. And in the end, he sort of says, oh, all right, then it's fine. That's fine. So they're, they're very pleased that she's got the OK. The funny bit is when he sees her walk past the, to go and get on the on the chair. And she's with two blokes. So she just has to go, sorry. And he's like, you said it was girlfriends. <laughs> Pretty funny stuff. Um, we find out that this is a trip to reconnect for Joe and Dan because there's been a bit of a distance between them over the last year because obviously Dan and Parker have been building their relationship. So this trip is kind of to bring the boys back together a little bit, but also for Joe to get to know his friend's girlfriend a bit better as well. So... And this is something that Joe and Dan always do. They always go to this mountain and they they forget everything else in the world for that time. It, yeah, it does become a, a, a thing at times, obviously, like, oh, she's a bit of a fucking spare wheel. What's she doing here? For, you know, two's company, three's a crowd. And later on, it's almost blamed for their situation and, for, and one of their death, spoiler, um, uh, you know, it's brought up again. Yeah, and, and done in a very realistic way because grief can bring out a lot of weird feelings and blame and hatred and anger. Um, so they hit the lift. They're on the lift. And they start talking, and they're sort of calling each other little nicknames. And Joe says, for fuck's sake, I'm the third wheel here, aren't I? And, yeah, you're on a ski lift with a couple. But it is what it is. There's some um, friction because Parker smokes. Joe doesn't like that, even though he smokes spliffs. So there's some. Yeah, don't, don't, don't give me that. Like, no, I, no. I, I mean, okay, for you're not saying okay, you're just saying. Everyone's got say, advice, but <clears throat> yeah, but um, no, also, but what I'm saying though is like the smell of cigarettes is fucking rubbish. The oh, smell yeah, yeah. of a, a smell of a joint's better. But it causes friction between the characters because, and they have that exact, pretty much that exact argument, you know, he yeah, says, I'm with, I'm like with an Lynch. Ashtray, that kind of thing. I'm with Lynch on that. Um, they, two of them are snowboarders, um, but Joe Lynch doesn't, he's a skier. Um, he can't, he can't snowboard. He doesn't like it. He likes to, is that right? He's the one that skis, isn't he? Uh, they, no, I think it was the other one. That's oh, is skis. it? Dan? Yeah. 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 Skier. yeah, yeah um, I think it's cast very well. Cause I feel like Lynch, uh, uh, looks like he would be, he, and he does. He kind of it seems more of like well, a he's snowboarder. He's a stoner, well. surfer, skateboarder guy. He yeah. looks like the kind of guy that would definitely, you know, he hits on the girls and he's a snowboarder. You're right, yeah, he's the cool one, isn't he? Yeah. Um, I know back in the day, like uh, pro skaters, just to get some extra money, would go to like in the ski season, become a pro snowboarder very easily, make tons of money, and then just come back and just quit it and come back because it was so easy for them. They found it's done numerous times. I think so. Yeah. Um, now, this ski lift that they're on has a little bit of a malfunction when they're halfway there. So it breaks down for a little bit. It, it's it's really good to have this. It's just that thing to show, like, um, it's going to give... There's different reasons. Like, the audience is going to be like, okay, later on. We obviously know from the reading of what the movie is before we get into it, and so, so are most people. Um, but it's good just to show this sort of the like the mechanics this stopping like here. It's good for the uh, cast member in the in the film, like the characters, to be like, oh shit, okay, and for like um, Parker not to panic straight away later on because that's the thing with the, the fact that we're having someone and some people in the same situation for a long period of time. We're going to have to draw that out. That could get really boring really fucking quickly. Well, it's almost a double red herring as well because it might it leads you to think that perhaps later on um this is going to be the reason why they're stranded there's going to be a fault with the mechanics where actually it's just some hu human commun miscommunication um but also what it does is it sets up um that a little conversation just briefly while they're stuck you know about oh i knew a guy that once jumped off a ski lift yeah really oh yeah yeah and they sort of talk about oh it's fine i've done this a billion times ski lifts get stuck occasionally sometimes people hurt themselves and you have to wait for a little bit 
so it kind of sets this this whole thing up really of you know is this what's going to happen later and mm. you and, know and the the scare stare fuck me chairlift behind them has got the real joe lynch and adam green going what the right. fuck um, yeah <clears throat> as a cameo that's right um they get to the top of the mountain and uh joe goes to hit on a girl who i believe is played by adam's adam green's ex-wife riley yeah, um so. and she he's caught blocked because her boyfriend comes over and he's sort of oh come on man i thought i had a chance with her then you know all this kind of stuff yeah. and then we get a nice little ski montage you need a montage in one of these sort of movies yeah they're all trying things out trying different moves so skiing the snowboarding i've and got the, a dvd i've been meaning to watch for ages i keep forgetting because i have to, you know me i'm seasonal and it is seasonal now but it hasn't got that cold ski school have you ever seen ski school yes i have yeah it's any good is that the one that's like police academy i think so yeah yeah it's it's all right <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is what it is there was loads of movies and ricky morgan on his show um dr movie he has covered a lot of these sort of police academy clones that came out okay ski school ski patrol there was a bunch of them I, that came i'm waiting out. for a time i just go ah i just pop it in oh yeah but what about watching the film Ooh. Hey. um Later on, after all their skiing and snowboarding, they go for pizza and they sort of sit and have a chat uh, about, you know, it's coming towards the end of the day. The ski lift's only going to go up a couple more times. It's getting dark. Let's do a proper run. And they're kind of a little bit being a bit nasty about Parker because she's not very good it's, it's snowboarding it's not being nasty it's just being realistic like he, it's just, like he's like saying you know this is supposed to be a fast to rekindle can't we go up there and just have a quick run down like oh, like me and you fast fucking yeah hit it. without having to stop I, and I, help her I, I again the same as lynch completely with him if, if any of these characters that i was going to be it's going to be lynch i'm completely understand this come on let's fucking have a quick go and she comes on and kind of overhears it and she's kind of like that's cool why don't you guys do it and they're like no no come it's like i'd be like yeah chill the fuck out here we won't be yeah. long parker says no no, no you, i won't is, get in your way you do it i'll stay here the thing is give lynch that once he's done that that's like him jizzing he's done that he's happy he's gonna go off and probably go and pull someone or go off and party and he's rekindled a bit of that thing back do you know what i mean it's you know yeah and but, she they wouldn't have died they would have got stuck up there she would have been like oh they haven't come back yet and called the you know that's authorities. true that's so, true. so I t- let so her you're say it's all her fault. Is we maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, or they could have just fed her to the wolves. Um, so feed her uh, to the wolves. So it is dark now, but they do decide that the three of them are going to go up the mountain for one last proper big run, speed down. So they go over to the guy. So, so paid. she's going to join them. Are we saying then, and, and yeah. up with the speed with them and really hit it? And there is a, there is a good little bit of um, future building here in that she says, well, "I'm just going to go and get my mobile phone out of my locker," and he's like, "Don't get your mobile phone because it's just going to be a bunch of messages from your mum. Leave it there, enjoy the moment." So that's why none of them have got a mobile phone with them. Although I suppose you probably wouldn't take one when you're skiing anyway. No, I you would take one when you're skiing because it's a fucking fucking mountain. Yeah. I definitely have one absolutely with me. take one. If fucking dumb than they didn't take one, I, well, I'm saying that I don't know. I can't remember when I did it. It wasn't such a thing because it was a long time ago when I did it um, snowboarding. So, uh, listeners, whoever snowboards or skis or whatever, do you take your phone on them? Of course they do. No one's going to leave their phone nowadays. It's like yeah. fucking stuck to them like basket case, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Fucking basket mobile phone case. <clears throat> Well, they go over to the fella who's not happy with them because he kind of, obviously, they tricked him. But he still took the $100 bribe. Um, and they say to him, please, 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 can we go up? And he's like, no, no, we've got bad weather coming in. Um, it's dark now. I'm not really supposed to let anybody else on. He's totally right. He is. <clears throat> and they end up saying, oh, please. She, she does her please face, please. And he says, oh, for fuck's sake. All right, on you go. Do you know how I know he's right and saying no? Two of them died <laughs> <clears throat> by persuading him. 
That's how I know he's correct in doing his work. He should be get job of employee of the year, but no. Well, he lets them on, <clears throat> and I'm just... surprised after that ruse with the let me and my girlfriends come on, and it's actually me and my two male, male buddies. But he's it's the end of the shift, and he's really tired. And after they get on the lift and start heading their way at the mountain. He pulls the chain across, and there, technically, they are the last people. But a guy comes over, another colleague, and says, Hey, you need to go and see the boss. He wants to talk to you about shift changes. And he says, Oh, right. Okay, it's, watch my... it's, it's nice because it's very realistic actions. Uh, uh, one thing leads to another thing that rolls yeah. over to another thing. Domino effect, but very natural and realistic. And he, he shouts as he runs off to see the boss. He says, oh, there's three more that have just gone on. Once they come down the mountain, that's it then. You can turn everything off. And he says, OK. Uh, and then three snowboarders come down. So he's wrong. So actually, there's there's three coming down and three have just gone up. So that's six. It's what, it's what he meant to say, yeah. Fuck me. It's because he's rolled up about the fact that he's shift manager and it's his bachelor... Oh, his brother's brother in law, brother's 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 in fact, they're like, oh, not again. They're just more annoyed than anything. It is. It's when later on we get to it, but it's when the lights go out. It's like the first, like, holy shit moment. But we as an audience have seen the man pull the big lever. Ooh. So we know. Oh, so we know it's actually just been switched off now. So they wait there for a while. They talk. Could we jump from this height? I'm not sure. We could jump from this height. I heard about somebody that did. Maybe we could. I'm not well, sure. What should we do? They don't get there just yet. Do they? There's like the snowstorm, and they just sort of sit it out for a bit, hoping that it's going to start up again. Yeah, it'd be in a horrible situation, really, because you're cold. Going right, we need to get down this soon, and then it's just going to get later and later. And at some point, you could be like, "Fuck!" Have they got watches? Um, don't think they have because I don't them... think time was uh, discussed. But. After about ten minutes of them talking about, you know, you know, in different- si- sorry, you know, in situations like this, your mind plays tricks on you. You sit there and think, oh, it must have been like uh, sixty minutes easily, and it's like been three minutes. Yeah, yeah. Well, they discuss ways to die because they're just passing the time. What would happen if you fell from a great height? You know, all these different way things that they're talking about, and just as they're sort of relaxing and waiting for the, what they think is for the machine to turn back on the next thing that happens Gav is that all the lights are turned out it's a <clears throat> it's it's the moment you know, I think everyone would be like in the audience would be like oh shit yeah Cause we, because we know what's going to happen you're now halfway up a mountain 50 feet in the air but no, there's no lights now it, it's the same thing of going to watch full it's the same thing with those sorts of movies you're like we're just waiting for the moment we just want that moment, and we're watching the the gradual build up of it. So essentially, there's these big floodlights that f- track the path of the ski slope and the chairlift uh, all the way up and down the mountain. But they're all turned out, so now they're in the dark too. As bit, and, and like a snowstorm starts up, the wind's howling. It's just like the worst situation possible. And imagine you're just sitting there, like in that sort of situation. It's could be like at some point, like. Fuck, we 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 actually really need to think about this situation now. We could actually we got into a situation now where death is, you know, something which is actually a possible factor to, to even discuss. You know, well, uh, initially they're under the illusion that someone will know they're there. <coughs> this is probably a fault. Uh, you know, they, they, there's no way that they would have turned everything off because but, they must know that we're up here. Yeah, totally. But that seed at some point pops into your head. The anxiety pops into your head of like, oh, this could be death. No, stop, stop. This is not at all. Not at all. You'd say to yourself. Dan says, "Do you think I should jump?" And they said, "No, no, no. Don't, don't do that. You know." You, you'll probably really hurt yourself if you jump. It is quite far, so they don't do that. They start getting worried. Parker starts freaking out, having a bit of a panic attack, as you rightly would, because they realise that today is Sunday and the ski resort is actually shut 
because first of all they think we just gonna have to wait until the morning but then they realize the ski resort is shut for five days yeah yeah there's no way they're going to survive up there for five days so they know at this point they're fucked although joe says someone will come someone will come parker says i need to pee joe says me too obviously he can pee okay but she can't at this point um and this is where the snowstorm kicks in just to make things worse the snowstorm kicks in now this is the bad weather that the guy was talking about he he was right when he gave he said bad weather's coming Hmm. oh it's cruel it's cruel they all start screaming and shouting for help but no one can hear them because they're up high in the air and the wind carries their voices far away i know me and my me and my bladder if i was in that situation i couldn't pee and it was a case of whipping my clothes down they're coming down Oh yeah, I'd be peeing off the side, absolutely. You know, like, like um, so, I'm thinking as a as a lady, I'd be like, guys, my trousers and pants coming down, and I'm just gonna fucking do some balance perch to perch. Yeah. <laughs> Hang your butt and you guys are gonna help me counterweight this thing so my yep. ass can tip over here so I can piss. And you never know, might do a little shit. It probably freeze on the way down into a yellow <laughs> icicle. <laughs> Freezing coming down like a lightning <laughs> bolt, a frozen piss lightning bolt. At this point, they start discussing that they can't really feel their legs, pins and needles. Oh, this, uh, it, it gives me anxiety almost. I, yeah. I don't like to be confined. I like to move a lot. I am i can't sit still. Um, this would just, uh, yeah. You, you wouldn't want to be sitting next to me. Now, in what is one of the cruelest moments in the film that Adam Green has done to us as an audience, we get a little comfort blanket come along for Gav. Oh, I like a good comfort blanket. Kane Hodder. And Kane is a good one. He's such a nice character and uh, person in real life. So they hear a noise and they look down and they see all that way down below them a ski plow. Oh, we're saved. Someone's come for us. Yay. Yay. It's Kane Hodder. Yay. Jason Boyd has arrived. Woo. Woo. Uh, however, he can't hear them because this, firstly the wind is taking their voices up and also secondly he's in a ski plow which is extremely loud he stops and they're, and they're like, he, he's, yes, they're like he's stopping he's seen us but it's because he gets a radio call saying hey what are you doing the, this movie is totally about the audience knowing exactly that they're fucked all the time before they do yeah the whole the whole movie and he ends up getting a call to turn back around in the ski plow they throw some of their stuff down at him, which he doesn't hear, he doesn't see. Um, and he just drives off to go home and get drunk. Doesn't hear them at all. No. Next up, their faces they're, start to hurt. They're from pretty Snowburn. disappointed, by the way, they're as gutted. you can imagine. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> and their faces are starting to go a bit red from Snowburn and early frostbite. Yeah. So, to keep things you know entertaining they start talking about their favorite breakfast cereals you know what we get what was yours mine's this one oh yeah i like that one. Oh, what, i like what that. is yours my favorite breakfast cereal mm. Oof, that's a difficult one gav very difficult the one i one of my favorites from a from a kid it's very expensive now for some reason in the uk is um lucky charms yeah that, uh, i only really had them for the first time last year fucking pretty good Oh, I fucking love Lucky Charms. Those little marshmallow pieces are dope. Yeah, really uh, good. Mine, mine's a classic. It's an old school classic, but it's dummy, dummy good for a long time. Cocoa Frosties, Pop. Cocoa, oh. Cocoa Pops. Yeah, Cocoa Pops are right. I, I, I like. I think I like a chocolate milkshake at the end, kind of sort of thing. You know, I like Frosties as well. Yeah, Frosties are right. They could get a bit too sweet. Yeah, I like corn flakes. I, I but, sometimes like bland corn flakes just with milk. I kind but, of dig that. But I like cornflakes with raisins. I chuck a load of raisins on mine. Fucking hate raisins. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. (laughs) That curry I had earlier has got raisins in it. Carry on. Okay. It's true. Um, Okay, so where are we? Uh, Yeah, so frostbite, their faces are hurting, and they're talking about breakfast cereal. And then, out of the blue, Joe says, somebody is going to have to jump. Well, or someone could shimmy over to the other the other stair cart. Well, they talk about that a bit later on. But that, that should have been the first thought, 
because that's still dropping down from a length. So worst case scenario, you go along and you drop, you're still dropping down. Yeah. I'd go yeah. that. It's a win-win. It, but you're, you're still getting the, the desired effect. Well, somebody needs to jump. Parker says, I don't want to die. Um, and while they're in the middle of discussing what they do, she drops one of her fucking gloves. Not a fart. Not a fart. She drops her guts off the side of the... She drops one of her gloves. And, of course, this is going to lead to a scene later. Her hand is now going to be exposed to the elements. And they've noticed that their tips of their noses are all turning purple. Don't touch it, don't touch it, because if, if you do anything to it, you could lose your whole nose. I know where you could put your hand to keep it warm. Jesus. Dan says, I'm going to jump. I was thinking about two quotes. Sometimes the warmest place it is inside man. What is that from the thing? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if he just said that. Imagine if he just the turn I dropped my said glove. that. The warmest place to hide is inside man. <laughs> <laughs> or, if you're Luke Skywalker, inside a tauntaun. That too, but there's no tauntauns up there. There is a man, though. There is a man. Get inside him. <laughs> Wear me like a glove. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, Dan says, I'm going to jump. I'm brave. I'm going to take one for the team, and I'm going to jump. Because he said, I've done this before. As a skateboarder, I don't appreciate the ankle situation we're about to have. He reveals to them, just as he's about to jump, I lied. I've never done this before. Of course he hasn't done that before. Do you think I'll be all right? They're like, yeah, snow down there, you should be right. Now, I said to my wife, what they've forgotten is they've been up there for about five hours at this point. That snow is, well, before it was thin, it was powder, it was soft. It's been frozen fucking rock solid. Yeah. So he, land, he lands on his legs, Gav, doesn't he? Yeah, it's horrible. And his legs just completely shatter. Yeah, it's just it's mushed. Bones coming out everywhere. Yeah. He... The shock, the acting is fantastic from Kevin Zegers here, because the shock, because he doesn't realise it at first, he sort of sits up, and then look, the shock as he looks at his legs going in random directions, and he starts going, oh my god, oh my god, it's more the, the look of it than the pain that he, he's screaming about, first of all, and they're going, are you okay, Dan? And he's like, the bones are sticking out of my legs! Yeah, he probably wouldn't have the actual uh, pain... Uh, for, yeah, the shock factor would be uh, uh, the initial thing going on, uh, and adrenaline would be spiking pretty hard. And they say, "Right, can you move?" And he's like, "No, I fucking can't move. My bones are sticking out my legs. Can you slide down the hill?" No. Um, this is the only thing I think. Like this is the only way I feel like he can still be talking like he is. Otherwise, I don't think so. I think it'd just be like laying there, like fucked just go yeah, well, oh. well he does say not long at, quickly afterwards he says i can't actually feel them that much anymore that's is that a good thing or a bad thing but that's because of the cold and the numbness yeah, maybe, and the loss and, of blood uh, and maybe paralyzed so um i suppose that might be the reason why he can still sort of talk because he tries to reach for his ski pole is it well they throw him um a scarf to use as a tourniquet on his leg to try and stop the bleeding and yeah, it's just out of his reach yeah, right, so yeah. They don't show it so much, but you hear him reaching for it. And every with every little inch of him reaching for it, you hear more bones sort of creaking and snapping. And you just keep cutting back to Joe and Parker's faces as they're listening to the screams and the nice. crunch and bones of their friend. Eventually, he gets it and he tries to tie it up. Um, and Joe, Joe says, why don't I climb the cable uh, to a pole like, like climb onto another chair and um you know i'll i'll uh be able to climb down the ladder and they're like well i don't think you should try it it's going to be too cold there's too much ice he says no i think i'll do it i think i'll do it and uh he he suddenly this is where we get a first glimpse of our hairy little friend isn't it our hairy little friend oh wolf <laughs> A troll? <laughs> a troll turns up. Well, they hear a noise, first of all, and there's some howling wolves. And yeah, it's, 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 it's not a good situation. Dan sort of worried. Joe's going, well, I think it's probably just a coyote. It's not a coyote! I know the sound of wolves! 
oh, wolves, wolves are pussies here. They're not going to do anything. They're not going to attack you. They're more afraid of you than you are of them. He said they're trying to reassure him. Of course, of course. Um, it's, it's, I think at that point, you, you must, at the point when you're laying down there with your legs broken, anyway, it must be like, well, I'm going to die. You must be like you're gonna freeze. There's nothing, nothing. No one's come up here. No one's. It's you know you're gonna die. But then the wolves come along. It's like I'm really gonna die here. Well, the first wolf we see is just one on its own, and so Dan but buries his head in his hands and he's crying. And then he, as he sits back up, there's just a wolf in front of him growling. Well, well they're knocking some ice down for some reason. I can't remember the reason. For yeah, that. and it's all landing and on. So he's covered his face up. So then he pulls his face away, looks in front of him. It's a wolf, and it's such. It's really well shot. Uh, the act, the acting of the wolf is great. Apparently, um, the wolf got too close to the actor. Oh, really? Uh, so there's a it shot shit, where... It shit you up, though. Fucking scary. Well, the, there's a shot where the actor looks to the camera for a split second, and that's because he was looking behind the camera to the wolf handler. To say. As in, <laughs> is this all right? And as soon as they uh, cut, they got the wolf, because the wolf got a bit too close. Because although you can train any animal in, for movies... You can't it really is, train wolves and tigers and it's things. Still to an eat. Animal. Yeah. It's still a fucking wolf. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, something can spook an animal. Uh, the best trained animal, you know. But they managed to scare the wolf away um, by shouting and throwing things. And and Dan says that at this point, I can't feel my legs. The other's frostbite is kicking in on their noses. Their noses are turning purple. And Joe says, "Right, that's it. I am going to climb now to the other the other lift behind us on the cable." As he starts doing it, for no reason at all, he starts climbing back. And you think, well, why is he doing that? And that's because he's seen a pack of wolves mm. heading for Dan. And he doesn't want Parker to see what's about to happen. And neither does Dan, because Dan, and it breaks my heart when he says this, he shouts, don't you let her see. Oh, yeah. Don't you let her watch this. Yeah, it's quite full on. Because he knows he's about to get scoffed. I feel like uh, he should just carry on climbing, though, you know. Um, and they they said earlier about the 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 ropes being sharp. They're not sharp, um, obviously. In the in in the scope of this film, in well, this they are film, in, that he, in he this cuts story, his hand, this doesn't film. he? Yeah, but they're not in real life. In the story of this film, they are though, for whatever yeah. strange reason. Um, yeah, um, I, I don't know. I just kept climbing and tried to get to you know try and get keep going. But well, we now have to watch. Um, Joe and Parker yeah. cuddle each other it's while cut, they hear cut between back and forth sort of thing, and it's um, mainly looking at their faces. Yeah, you don't see any because they shot they shot the scene. Um, very brutal, bloody scene of a man being pulled apart and eaten by wolves. But Adam decided, as is often the case, less is more. Mm. Let's show. Let's just hear it and let's show our other two actors' faces as they are having to n acknowledge what's happening. So if you want to go and watch it, I believe that the scene is out there, deleted scene, probably on the DVD Blu-rays. I've never actually seen it, but yeah, you, you can see Dan get ripped apart by walls, but you don't see it in the normal movie. And I think it's more effective this way. It's just, it's just what you hear, really, more than anything. Yeah, it's just applying, just uh, people's or imagination. <clears throat> the worst bit is right at the end as he takes his final makes his final noise and you just hear like a yeah and you think well that's the blood and as its throat's been ripped out it's quite my, in, wife, my wife didn't watch that scene it's quite an intense scene and as she screams and it sort of sustains the echoes away as we fade to black and yep. it's quite a nice ending to that having us scream out in a fade to black and they cry together um, because they've just lost their best friend and boyfriend um, but once it's all gone quiet it is now though uh, a no point of return this is a situation where they're like the death's involved now like, the, we, we are fucked we have to now make uh, life or death situations it's, yep. it's to that point that every decision we make now is life or death if they stay there they freeze to death if they jump they potentially break their legs if they don't break their legs they have to fight off wolves you know it's just it's not a good situation really they have a, have a discussion now um, once the sort of once they not the grief has settled in but once they have taken a breather and this is where they have a bit of an argument he kind of Par blames her a bit 
Parker says, why did you let him jump? He says, why would you say that? Yeah. Why, that, did, you, that, why did you even come on this trip? It's going to be, uh, be the, all the, the general things that happen with grief, isn't it? Uh, those questions. This scene is, for acting, this is the best scene. It's phenomenally done. The grief, the anger, and the fact that at the end of it, it all just comes out and they hug each other. And they know that they need to hug each other as well, not just because they've both lost someone, but for their bodily warmth. So it's kind of all comes together nicely, really, at the end of this scene. Um, but yeah, all is forgiven. They're both up shit's creek without a paddle, as it were, so we might as well work together rather than argue. That's all out of the system now. We do see a few little shots of Dan's fingers sticking out of the snow, just to remind us that there's a body down there. Um they have a bit of a chit chat. They just talk about random things, really. Um, they discuss dogs. Parker's got a dog. She's really worried about her puppy. Um, and he's like, "We're going to get you home. You're going to see your dog. You're going to see your dog again. I promise." It's kind of like in that sort of situation where you start putting other lives. I know it's an animal, but uh, putting lives in front of your own life, or, or just thinking of other lives which will be impacted by the fact you are not there. So yeah, thinking about the animal, you can't go back and feed it. It's going to starve to death in, in the apartment. Um, it, it is something you'd think of, and you'd think of these sorts of other situations which are going to get a domino effect from your death, uh, especially if no one knows that if you died for a moment or whatever. So. Yeah, um, you need, I guess you need these conversations and stuff But when you're up there. Well, they talk and talk and talk until they fall asleep. And the next morning comes in, very early morning, daylight. And Parker's the first to wake up. And she realises she fell asleep with her hand on the metal railing, Gav. Not good. Not good without a glove. No. She doesn't wake up Joe initially. She sort of realises, oh, it's stuck. How am I going to get well, this off? She doesn't mean to wake him. It's because uh, she lifts her hand and the whole pole comes up because her hand's stuck to the pole. And he wakes up as she's ripping three layers of flesh off the palm of her hand in a very gooey, cabin fevery style effect. Very good stuff. It looks great. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's a nice one because it's, again, realistic and uh, could actually happen. Um, Joe says maybe someone will come now today. Today's the day someone will come. I don't think it is, Joe. Come on, mate. Joe said today's the day. Every day said today's the day. Today's the day. Joe's hands are fucked as well because he cut his hands trying to climb the cable and he's got frostbite kicking in as well on his nose. She's got it on her cheek uh, and the sun comes up and they start now getting sunburn as well. Yeah, it's just rubbish. Not great, not great stuff. Um, Parker pees herself. Yeah, it's a strange one, this one. It's like, has she hold her pee this long? Like, this is not happening for me. Maybe it's because I'm an older man. man. <laughs> Forget the hell, when I pee, I've got to pee. This is a young lady's bladder. I guess, but like, again, I don't know. And it becomes quite a moment which seems a bit strange. Like, it's all very emotional and piano movie music comes in. I know it's like it's not slightly de degrading for a lady to to pee herself. And obviously, if you just gonna sit there and pee yourself, it, another factor would be the fact it's going to be cold and wet, and that's going to freeze essentially. It'd be quite warm initially, though. Quite nice. Yeah, but that's not going to last. Uh, um, but I think the emphasis on it with the sad music's the the, the degrade in it, and uh, I don't know. It seems a bit unwarranted. It's a bit like fuck off. Your fucking friend's just been eating. Your boyfriend's been eaten by wolves. Like, My just fucking piss. Like, it's, it's not that big thing, you know. My interpretation of that music and her peeing herself is she's in such... Dire this straits. is the reality of the situation. Like, I have I'm to having to piss myself. myself. I would never do it because I'm a nice young lady. I've lost my hand, half yeah. my hand, you know. I don't know. I think you need to get rid of the programme here, the situation. Just take a piss away earlier on. On a side, side tangent, Gav, what music would you like to play while you were peeing yourself? Anywhere, not just on a ski lift, anywhere. If you had to sit somewhere and just start peeing yourself, what music would you like? Are we going to put videos up? That? Our videos up on our social medias of just me if you your are, hosts yeah. just peeing themselves with their, their choice of music. Let me have a just, think. You've got to wear like grey trousers so that the, the, the wet really shows. I, I'm going to have, even though I don't like the song, it's the first thing that popped in my head. It's kind of like Ghostbusters at the end. What? What just popped in your head, Ray? Basically, Gav, what just popped in your head? Um, the time of my life, day dancing song. <laughs> I don't know why. It just popped in. Amazing. 
I've had the time of my life. And I'm just paying myself. How about you? Um, and when does the P start? What point of the song? I never had a punch. The, sa- the saxophone. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, so as soon as the drum beat comes in, that's when I start okay, peeing. You see the mine, smile on my face. Mine hmm. would be the Magnum PI theme tune. Fuck me. I love it. Uh, and I'm talking, you know, you give it a good 10 seconds and then... That's when the pee starts showing on my my trousers, and the, you just slowly look at the camera. And this could be an wink. OnlyFans thing. Probably would. I bet we could get some OnlyFans of us sitting there peeing ourselves, and they would have to request the song that we pee ourselves to. Yeah, <laughs> uh, listeners, please don't let us know if you do want to see that. I I don't want to know. Well, there we go. Anyway, look, moving away back and back to this, they tr- they talk now about relationships. She reveals that Dan was the one. Dan was the one I wanted to marry. Um, he reveals how they became friends. They met each other at a very, very young age. It, 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 a little bit here feels it a little drags just a little bit here. Mm, yeah, I know what you mean, but I do like that there's a little bit of backstory there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I understand why it's here, but it's just it's that point where it's been like we've had some... Uh, uh, crazy shit going on um, because uh, off the back of that he then says well look we can't let dan have died for nothing so let's do this let's do this i'm gonna climb so he starts to climb the cable oh the sentence do it do, do it. it do, do it. it do it he climbs he climbs the cable to the chair behind them but while he's doing that i watched that again the other day and i really still really enjoy that film starsky and hutch movie i mean it's fucking brilliant it really is you know Vince Vaughn when he slaps Snoop Dogg that's a real slap nice Vince, Snoop Dogg I've seen an interview where he says there wasn't scripted and he said the gangster in me wanted to kill Vince Vaughn when he did that to me but because it was one of my first acting gigs I had to keep it together and afterwards Vince Vaughn came over and was like oh I'm sorry about that Snoop you know it just came to me and Snoop they joke about it now but at the time imagine slapping Snoop Dogg when he was in his gangster prime you just wouldn't do it have you ever seen Snoop Dogg without his top on? He's a skinny man, isn't he? It's a weird body. He's got the body of an eight-year-old boy. But stretched into an eight-foot yeah, tall really man. Yeah, it's a really elongated eight-year-old boy. It's really He's odd. very tall, very tall man. Yeah. Um, so Joe um, climbs the cables. While he's climbing the cables, some bolts start coming loose, which means her the chairlift that they were originally in, that Parker is still in, is now wobbling around and starting to tilt a little bit. It, yeah, because uh, these, these obviously these lifts would be uh, chairlifts would be checked and examined regularly, but for a sustained amount of weight for a long period of time, bolts are going to loosen up, I suppose. Yeah. But well, then, he managed- then again, sorry, I don't know if they would because I think they'd be frozen. I don't think they would actually. Okay. Mm, that's my hypo- hypothesis of it. Well, he makes it to the chair behind them and he says to her, Look, I can't make it all the way there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump down. If you can throw me a ski pole, at least I'll have some kind of a weapon to defend myself against the wolves. So she throws the ski pole. He prepares to jump. He drops. He's instantly attacked by wolves. They start biting him. He, he- manages to stab one of them. Yeah, he fights one off with the ski pole um this is the conversation my wife and i had what would you do she said you would go and fight the wolves i said to her how am i gonna fight a fucking wolf you're not fighting wolves so she she loves you because she thinks you're a hunky husband but yeah you know, i'm sorry dan i'm a best mate of yours but you're not fighting wolves but look i've got a black belt and kickboxing but Get, i don't think a wolf is going to respect in that in snow jumps jumping down or you're not gonna be starting jumping up doing fucking imagine kickboxing. if i started kickboxing a wolf it'd be like fucking... that liam neeson movie but better You'd be like Steven Seagal fighting wolves in the snow. I am the wolf. The lone wolf. I went down a fucking YouTube rabbit hole this weekend with some more Steven Seagal stories. I don't know what I did to myself, but apparently he actually, because it's his, like, productions, all these films, because they watch him in Malaysia or wherever the fuck they watch him, so he manages to keep making films. He actually fucking slaps the shit out of stunt people. Yeah, he's actually horrible actually hurts to them. them and, and they yeah. can't do anything about it. And a lot of them don't get paid. They end up not getting That's paid. That's why he's... That's why he's not respected by any of this, the people who still no, work with him. It's not, it's not how you make films. No, no one will work with him anymore. Um, no one in Hollywood will work with him anymore because he's, he's horrible. He's well, a bully. Well, there's a stunt guy who um, 
I was working with him and uh, end up saying that, yeah, I didn't get paid, you know, in yeah. the end. And it's a bit like, well, that's bollocks. Yeah, and there's lots of lots of interviews with him that have surfaced recently of them sort of saying, what do you think of Jet Li? What do you think of Jean-Claude Van Damme? What do you think of... And he's laughing at them. <laughs> They're not real. They're there's, not real. And it's like, dude, you weigh about 25 stone. What are you going to do now? There's not very much point in sort of trying to get Steven Scout to admit anything more than like his ego around his head, you know, and yeah. around him. Well, back to the ski lift. He stabs a wolf and he... He gets on a snowboard and he says to her, right, I'll go and get help. And he slides off down the hill on the snowboard to go and get help. Whee! With two wolves. Fucking chasing him. A whole after. pack of fucking wolves. Not, no, there's two of them, but I imagine there might be more. Um, yeah, because actually there's more perhaps. later on. Hey, well, they, 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 they've got him real quickly. What's he going to do? Uh, in case he's stabbing them behind and smacking them. Well... Parker thinks, what do I do now? I'm going to have to wait, I guess. She doesn't have much choice because the ski lift breaks and sort of well, falls she just, about well, half the height. Well, she waits now, thinking that uh, uh, Lynch is going to do something about it. Great. But then she kind of wakes up again. She has a little sleep again. It's just like, realises, like, I need to fucking sort this out. <clears throat> so she decides to go and jump herself. Yep. Because I guess the chair, she's, there's no way she's going to have the strength in her arms, I feel like, after sitting there for so long to go, and her hands fucked to climb down that thing, like Lynch. So, yeah, she's going to jump, which her boyfriend did, and she knows what happens, but she's to that situation. But all the, all the movement uh, loosens the uh, cable more. Yeah, so the chair falls about half the height, then stops suddenly, then which she falls actually, out of it. Which is actually benefits her. Yeah, although when it finally snaps, it lands on her leg. Yeah. Um, damaging her leg. Well, um, fall, if she drops and it falls down, uh, and it could have actually just fallen on her head and fucking taken her out there and then. That's very true. She then drags herself, like literally desperately drags herself. She just descends, using her hands. Descends the mountain with her hands. Uh, she goes, she comes across a lot of blood trail, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's Lynch eaten up, L- been eaten by li- wolves. He literally got just around the corner of some trees. That's about as far as he got. And uh, yeah, but luckily the wolves are all very full and very hungry That's the at thing. eating him. Yeah, animals don't know if uh, if animal is actually full uh, and uh, like a dangerous animal, like it won't it won't bother you. It's, yeah. So they look look around at her and they go, "Well, we've already got one of these over here. We'll eat this one anyway." So she drags herself yeah all the way into the middle of the highway. The first car doesn't see her. It's one of the wolves, actually, though. does sort of growl at her first because she sees it. But it's almost like a territorial thing. Like, this is our meal. Have you come to take some of our meal? Yeah. Because I would have, I would have growled animal. back. No, uh, no. You wouldn't show your teeth. That'd be the worst thing you oh, could I do. Oh, I would. I would. Uh, I'd moon them. A bit of, oh, I was watching the IT crowd when he's... Do you, watch, do you like the IT crowd? I love it, yeah. The bit where they can do the calendar... Take yeah. a photo of Canada, but ends up doing taking photographs of nerds, and he gets Moss to bend down on all fours and turn around and go, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. She finally gets the car to stop. The guy gets out of the car. Oh my God, are you okay? Well, no, she's not okay. There's a woman lying in the middle of the road, covered in blood. She's frozen half to death. Of course she's not right. So he picks her up, gets her in the car. He calls it in on his mobile phone. He says, I'm bringing her to the hospital now. And takes her to the hospital. And the last thing she hears is Dan's voice from what he said earlier, which is, you're going to be okay. I swear you're going to be okay. And she is. Yep. And it, it kind of ends with, although she's alive, her best, her, you know, two guys have died. She's not going skiing again. Never. Never. There's more chance of Brody going surfing she might peer pants each time it snows from now on the trauma would be fucking terrible okay before we do our final summaries and scores are you a sitter or a jumper if you were the, in this situation are you a sitter or a jumper i'm a climber along the polar mm. i'm not doing either of those two thinking outside the box <laughs> absolutely yeah interesting 
even if you're like, I haven't got the strength totally in my arms, you pull yourself up so you can get your feet up as well and your arms and hold on to your arm like that and shimmy yourself down with your feet. Like Jackie Chan, sort of. Well, just anything. Like, you know, not jumping. That's fucking dumb as fuck. Just, uh, no. I'm a jumper. you are jump. And I'll tell you when I would do it. I would do it in the morning when that sun was up for a few hours, melting the top couple of feet of layers of the snow, okay. making it soft. I'm jumping then because then you've got a cushion. If you land right, you're probably going to be okay. The reason he broke his legs when he jumped is because that's that they'd left it hours and hours and hours overnight. But in the morning when that sun's come up and it's taken a bit of the edge off, I would have jumped. I'd have jumped and I'd have run and taken my chances with the wolves because I'd fight. I'd fight for it. Alice told me she'd be a sitter. She said she'd just wait until she passed out and died in her sleep. <laughs> yeah, just go to sleep. I was going to go to sleep. <laughs> she said I'd rather just die in my sleep, freeze to death. Okay. So, if we're ever in that situation, I guess I've got as long as it See takes later, Alice. to death <laughs> while I run off fighting wolves to get back to this town and try and get some help. Meanwhile, leaving you monkeying your way along the cable. <laughs> going, Where are you going, Dan? Wolves, Gav! I gotta fight these wolves. Yeah, but like I said, do do what I do what I said. Try shimmy yourself down first, and if you fall, you're dropping anyway. You do that. I'm fighting the wolves. You haven't got down there yet, though, have you? I'm telling you, shimmy first, shimmy then drop. <laughs> shimmy, drop. Shimmy, shimmy drop. Shimmy drop. Shimmy ya. Yeah, shimmy yeah. Shimmy, shimmy, yeah. shimmy drop. Shimmy drop. Uh, anyway, do you give us a thumbs up or thumbs down? I give this a thumbs up. Oh, it's, you're also uh, giving it a frozen thumbs up out of the snow. It's um. A really, really good movie, and accessible for non-horror fans as well. Absolutely, you could. I, I could lend this to my mother, and she would watch it. My mum saw it and liked it. Did um, she? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, it would have been on the horror channel. She told me she watched it. I know she liked it. Um, yeah, it's really easy, accessible. But also, if you like your horror, and it's got some lovely little bits of gore in there, just splattered in. Um, and it's one of these sort of, you know, the wilderness fights back movies. So it's definitely a thumbs up from me. It's definitely a thumbs up from you. Yeah. And now I feel very, very cold. But luckily... Someone that always likes to warm our hearts. Bill Murray has walked on in the room. Hello, Bill. That, How are you doing? That was, a, that was a very long shower you had there. Are you... Uh, he's, in... he's brought like all steam. He's steaming up there. You're ste- there's like steam coming off of you. Is that my wife's dressing gang? And why haven't you dried yourself? Very strange. Right, well, hang on. Here's the list. Okay. Okay, what's he giving you? It's a list. Why, is he, why are you smirking like that, Bill? Okay, I'll have a look at that now. Well, well, Bill, your job is to take us into World of the Strange. So let's do that, and then we'll look at your list, okay? All right, Bill. Bill? Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. <laughs> Out of the strange. Oh, strange. It's a strange world. Here we are, World of the Strange. Thank you very much, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Uh, so, we are going to be looking at a series of real life people stuck in unusual or horrible places Which is fucking brilliant because we just had frozen uh, it's such yeah. a great world of strange so uh golf clap for the list well done well done but bill as well bill Bill's oh, the one, well i, I can't take any well done, bill. Well done. um now the lady who got her arm stuck trying to retrieve her poo isn't on this list but she <laughs> should be should be she should be but um yeah most of these people survived some of them didn't though so i won't i'll go through these fairly briefly you feel free to tangent and ask questions and get annoyed or stressed, as you often do. So we'll talk about a man stuck in an elevator, first of all. Yeah? It's I've, not, I've not an there. uncommon. I, yeah, I've been stuck in one. I've uh, dropped for a few floors in one. Christ. Yeah, which went... Bow, 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 I was doing a paper round when I was about 14, and the doors opened in the lift because I used to deliver to a block of flats or apartments and it opened it opened three quarters of the way between floors so there was a gap 
And I tell you, now I've seen Final Destination 2, I'd never do this again. Mm. But I climbed up and out through the gap. I, yeah, uh, I watched... Because uh, I was uh, worried about being stuck in there. I watched a, uh, an, uh, an old lady doing that in a uh, video the other day. And I was like, oh, God. The whole time, you're like, is it going to move? Is it going to move? Jesus Christ. Well, a man named Nicholas White was in a skyscraper in New York City in 1999. Very quickly, years ago, I was at work and... Um, <clears throat> where we work in there was a lift but it's a see-through lift on oh, the God. outside inside this factory thing um, Johnny you know Johnny him and yeah. our old boss they got stuck in the lift and they were there for about two and a half hours and we could see them both in the lift together and it was see-through and he was and the boss was getting so annoyed and we were just we were like we are just crack on doing the work and we are just looking up like hey right way thumbs up and laughing the whole time and, just thinking, uh, uh, and it must have been the worst situation because my old boss was a twat um yeah hilarious brilliant well this chap was working on the 43rd floor of the McGraw building he took the elevator downstairs to have a cigarette break when he came back, he got the express elevator that doesn't stop. It just goes straight to the 39th floor. Feels like it's in Charlie <clears> and Chocolate Factory. Goes straight to the bubble Glass room. Glass elevator. Somewhere around the 13th floor, dun, 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 the elevator stopped. And there's security footage, and you can watch this footage on YouTube if you want of him. He spent 41 hours trapped in the lift on his own. And apparently in the footage, you can see him pacing around, trying to sleep, trying to open the doors, and slowly, slowly going insane. Apparently he experienced hallucinations. Fucking he had no hell. no water, no food. All he had was a packet of cigarettes and a packet of mints. So he lived off a packet of cigarettes tell, and mints for 41 he, hours. Tell me he mixed them together and made some menthol cigarettes. Could have done. He... Wow, so so he's just peeing and pooing in there, or whatever he needs to do. Probably didn't poo, maybe he just peed. Well, he probably, I probably, probably pooed. <clears throat> um, but his life has never been the same. He but, was rescued. But, but why? Why did it take <clears throat> so long? Uh, nobody knew he was there because he was in the express elevator, which is barely used, and there was no way to call out or dial out like there is. There's no alarm. Why, why is there not an alarm in the lift? I don't know. That's ridiculous. This was 1999, but I you should... he sued the fuck out of him. Well, he was rescued, um, but he basically has never, ever got on a lift again since. Of course he hasn't. And he refused to go back to work, but they fired him. What? Because he... What the fuck? What, what because country he is he went to work. America. Oh. Why do, I, I don't understand why there was not a lawsuit going on here. But eventually he got a settlement figure. Okay. Because he claims, you know, I've experienced 41 hours okay. of hell. Okay, You Thank can't you. fire me after no. all of that. Well, what company was this? Name it and shame. Say. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. McDonald's. But that's the first one. And that was that was the most normal of the ones, really, on the list. It's just an elevator. People are stuck in lifts all the time. Let's get into some weird places to be stuck, okay? How about if we mix heights and high-voltage electricity together? What do you think about that? High voltage. Well, let's move to Lancashire in England, when an unidentified man combined these two things. Uh, a 36-year-old man was spotted tangled up in a 275 kilovolt line, 65 feet off the ground. Is this a Spider-Man enemy? <laughs> Electro. A villain coming to him, yeah. Um... So he was 60 feet up in the air, tangled up in a 275 kilovolt cable. How? Nobody knows well, to this day well, how well, the man got there. Because he died from... Or how he got stuck there in the first place. <clears throat> He's lucky and he was rescued. Did, did, did he not explain then how he got there? Well, no one knows. He, he hasn't told them. He must. He, uh, Someone somewhere must know. <clears throat> so, so what's going on here? There's a load of fucking cables, and he somehow got. You know that advert that used to run on British TV about the frisbee, the kite going up into the the electricity. Don't climb up a a pylon tower, mm. you'll die. You know, it's basically he's up one of those pylon towers, tangled up. Right, sorry. <clears throat> now I've got you. Um. Okay. So the local utility 
electricity company had to cut the power to that little grid, that area, square mile radius. So the neighbours are loving it. Yeah. Then they had to get the the uh, police and emergency rescues to climb up, cut him free from the wire, and he was taken to hospital and was described as alive but incapacitated. Fuck! You don't want to be alive after that. The police considered pushing pressing charges against him for trespassing, but they didn't eventually. <clears throat> and did he live? Yes, yes. He's fine. So... But, but, it's fine. but the Where mystery is he here is he what? never explained what he was doing up there. <coughs> Where is he now? What's and he doing? He's just living in Lancashire in England. Just carrying on with his life. You can't just carry on with your life. What did you do at the weekend, Fred? <sighs> well. Oh, bloody hell. I, I, went, I went climbing up that bloody pile on Everyone's the end of the field. Everyone's going to be saying, what were you doing up there? Your mum? What were you doing up there, Fred? Oh, I don't know, mum. Sleep climbing? Sleep climbing. Well, let's uh, let's move things over then to someone in Michigan called Ben Carpenter. Okay. Ben has muscular dystrophy right. and uses a motorised wheelchair to get around. Yep. He was travelling around. Oh no! Where's he going to get stuck? Bless him. He's. Don't laugh. <laughs> I had to mute myself there because I'm coughing and laughing already. Okay. So he was travelling around the centre of Michigan mm -hmm. and he tried to cross a busy intersection. The light changed and he was a bit slow off the mark. And bear in mind he's in a motorised wheelchair so he's quite low down to the ground. Oh, a semi truck. No. I know what you're going to say here. A semi truck didn't see him and took him for a ride. And took him for a ride. Oh my god! His wheelchair was. Are we saying sideways with his wheel sideways. wheels burning down to like wedges? <laughs> what so is he there just shouting and hitting at it? What's going on? The wheelchair is jammed into the grill of the truck. Well, he's got muscular dystrophy, so he can't really do a lot. Um. It then went onto the highway, speeding along the highway. Oh my god! While he's stuck on a speeding truck. <laughs> I've never gone so high pitched in my life. Oh my but, god! But because he was strapped into the wheelchair, because of his muscular dystrophy, he was unharmed. But he did travel four miles sideways at 50 miles an hour, strapped to the front of a semi truck. How did they. How, what, how did it come to a point where people knew what was. How did the because driver motorists, know it was motorists were driving along and seeing it and calling. Nine, they got inundated with 911 calls because people were saying, there's a man on a wheelchair strapped to the front of a truck. And the driver was. Un, I didn't even know. He's just driving his truck. Of course get he this is. delivered. Get all this stuff He's delivered. having a sandwich and a coffee. He's <laughs> stroking his dog's <laughs> head, listening to the radio. He's having a right old time. He's smoking a fag. He's loving smoking it. Smoking the bandit. Fuck's sake. So, yeah, he was stuck there for four miles. About an hour, he's probably there. Life flashed before his eyes. The amount of flies on his face. It's on one side of his face. Just in his one, ear. <laughs> but him off and he looks like one face or whatever, so you know. Anyway, let's move on. Poor fella. But what, what was he like I'm not going shopping next week, I'm gonna stay in for Fuck a bit. that, I'm staying in there. So I'm getting fucking Amazon from now on. He's got it tough enough as it is, you know, muscular dystrophy in a wheelchair. And now I... he's strapped to the front of a fucking truck. That's the last thing you need really. Well I hope he got some compensation for that. It, it was no one's fault really. The job is gonna be like I'm not even shocked by it. I don't even know what's happening. Let's move on to the next one then. So everyone's locked themselves, haven't they, out of their house? We've all done it. Uh probably. How do we get in? Do we close? Have we left a window open? Does, is the back door open? How do we yeah, get in? Yeah, but it's always fun, though, <clears throat> when you've got to break into your own house. Well, a man in Arizona learned the hard way that you should never go full Santa Claus. Are we getting into some fucking Phoebe Kate's monologue? Not quite, no, but a 26-year-old man in, Tusk in Tucson forgot his keys in his house. He attempted to break in to his own home by climbing down the chimney yeah 
However, when he got halfway down the chimney, he realised this chimney's a bit too small. He got his feet on the ground in the living room, but then realised there was not enough space for him to crouch down and climb in, and there was absolutely no way he could go back up because he was stuck. I've heard of this. Uh, It took him screaming for four hours until neighbours because he couldn't reach his phone in his pocket he couldn't move his arms his arms were pinned so he screamed for Help, four hours I'm in the chimney <laughs> alright Santa are you hearing this outside and he's just like am I hearing in the air help I'm in the chimney that had been loud. you'd have to be loud well, they ended up. Uh, fire department ended up lowering a rope into the chimney. I thought it was it, someone died, so maybe I don't know this. Then. No, no, and he, he got back out, but that's fine. He never lost he his key again, though. Never lost his key again. What would you think of going down the chimney, though? Fuck me! Like, what a way to do it! I just smash wouldn't. a window. Yeah. Or call a locksmith. We locked ourselves out of the house about a year ago. Alice said, have you got your key? I said, no. She went, oh, don't worry, I've got mine. She didn't. So we were locked out with the two kids. So we just called a locksmith. And all he did was, he opened the door in three seconds flat, and then we had to go in and find ID to prove it was our house. And that was it. Oh, really? How much did it cost? Yeah. It's fucking 120 quid or something. Fuck, it for three minutes' work. Yeah. I'm in the wrong job. But you know what it's like, like if it's yeah, 120 it's quid or it's... Yeah. Um, what did he do? He had a device that he put in the letterbox and fiddled around with the, the lock whilst he pulled the handle down from the inside through, through the letterbox. Hmm. Basically, it's like a burglar that gets paid to do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, the next one is probably one of my favourite on the list, if not my favourite on the list. Okay. Headline is... Trapped inside a dinosaur's leg. Not anus, but but my first question is, uh, they're not around anymore. So how's this happening? Okay. Well, in Spain, there's a big attraction that you can go to uh, where there's lots of big model dinosaurs. Cool. Uh, just outside of Barcelona. Everyone loves a big dinosaur. We all love them. And there's a giant Stegosaurus. And uh, the statue um, had to be cut open by firefighters. And a body was found in there that had been in the leg within there for several days. Nice. What had happened is... Not nice. What had happened is the tourist had decided to shine his light on his phone inside the mouth of the Stegosaurus to see what was inside. Dropped his phone. Of course. So he thought, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm going to have to get that out. He's lent in to the mouth, fallen in to the leg, head first, trapped. And about five days later, people started smelling. This dinosaur's got really bad breath. What's that smell? Because obviously we're talking Spain, Gav. It's hot. You imagine, though, when they the first the first bits of the smell come out, be like, "Wow, this attraction is great!" They got like this smell of vision thing going on there. It smells like dinosaurs, as you can imagine that they smell like. Well, eventually, someone shone a torch into the statue to see if an animal or something had called oh, in. Oh God, the shock! And they found the man upside down in the leg of the Stegosaurus. Wow! Dead. Shit. You're going to like this next one because this would make a great movie. Okay. Okay. So this is a place rather than a thing to be stuck in. All right. So a group of children, uh, an orchestra, a child's orchestra, uh, left their native Bolivia to go and tour Germany. But the timing of this was that COVID-19 was starting to shut meant countries were starting to shut their borders down. Yeah, so these children travelling on a coach. Mm-hmm. So the orchestra uh, arrived in Germany for the tour in March 2020. Shortly after their arrival, their performances were all cancelled 
as large gatherings were obviously banned. Then Bolivia closed its borders, meaning they couldn't go back to their own country. So they found themselves stranded in the middle of nowhere, and they found a place called Rheinsberg Palace, which is a very, very old, hundreds of year old castle in the wilderness, half an hour, sorry, an hour and a half away from Berlin. And pandemic restrictions meant that they had to stay in the castle. Feels like a tomb sort of blind dead or something. They had to stay in the castle because of the pandemic restrictions. Um, But it is one of the most haunted castles in that part of Europe. That's fucking amazing. Uh, Its former occupant, King Frederick the Great, said to haunt it as well as many other ghosts. So it's just a castle out in the middle of nowhere and they're like, right, we've got a shelter a group of children uh, this, orchestral, is, this is like an 80s Italian horror movie uh, not to mention Gav that they couldn't leave the castle because there were packs of wild wolves roaming the castle I fucking love it <laughs> I knew you would like this one so the orchestra whenever they would try to leave an they had to run as back well, inside though. did at any point they go shall we play some music and they was like, do, 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 do. luckily the castle had a few bare bones staff that stayed on. Oh, so it was a, a working, not a, a ruins or something. Yeah, so there was like oh. a few staff members there that were able to donate clothes and cook for these kids. They had to live there in a haunted castle surrounded by wolves for two and a half months. You're joking! Children! Wow! Now that would make a great movie, wouldn't it? That's cool. Throw the wolves into the mix as well, so you can't leave. But you can't leave because of the wolves, that's the best thing about it. <clears throat> and you've got no service, you've got to throw that in there, you know. Amazing. Uh, uh, it's going to be some d- death of children, definitely. Yeah, one of them gets eaten by a wolf. Yeah. Where's Johnny? He's trying to leave. There's wolves. Yeah. But Johnny was the symbol player. No more symbols. Who does cowbell? Don't let maybe, them outside. Maybe the end scene is they all pick, pick up their own we- instruments to use as weapons against I the I actually the thought that they played music against the wolves. So I was quite liking that, actually. Trombone against the wolf. <laughs> that guy with the big boom. Or you could do lots of Benny Hill music. <laughs> Okay. Should briefly mention, um, many of you would have seen 127 Hours, the movie about uh, Aaron Ralston, whose arm got stuck in a uh, a rock and he had to cut his own arm off. Yeah. You've seen that movie. Great yeah. movie. James Franco, good, very good. And that's another one of these movies like Frozen, where someone's stuck in one place for a very long period of time. Oh, Danny Boyle then directed that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great movie. Just wanted to mention that one briefly as well. Um, just see if there's any more on the list worth mentioning. Oh, yes. Uh, there is another one about a child. The last one on the list. Little boy. Went to see his grandparents. They had an antique barrel worth hundreds of pounds. Hundreds of dollars. He decided he'd climb into this barrel. Got him. Got in it. He hasn't. He doesn't die, does he? No, he doesn't die. Good. He squeezed himself into it and then realised he couldn't get out because he had to squat to get into it. But because his knees were pinned, he couldn't straighten his legs again. Yeah. Couldn't get out. So they found him eventually in the barrel. Wasn't crying or screaming, very calm. And they said, well, the only thing we can do is smash the barrel. Grandpa... No, 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 no. This barrel was antique. Why can't they just pull him out? Because he's pinned. He's pinned in there. His legs are pinned in. You're going to have to break it to get him out. He's got himself in such a position, Mm. he might break his legs. Immediately, Grandpa says, no, no, no. Don't smash my barrel. It's worth hundreds of dollars. What are you on about? So they x-rayed, they had to x-ray the barrel with the boy in it in the emergency room to see where his legs and feet were to figure out a way to undo this sort of weird Jenga puzzle of a child in a barrel. 
So imagine X raying that. Boy in a barrel. Why, why, why can't you break it out and get me out? Your grandfather says the barrel's worth a lot of money. Right. Um, but I'm stuck in here. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> Wow. They tried. To, they tried to use the jewels of life to free the boy, just to slightly widen it enough, but that's that didn't what, work. What, what I was gonna say, can you just cut down, cut strips down where his knees are? In the end, Grandpa agreed to let them cut just the bottom of the barrel oh, no, off. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then he could stretch his legs out, and, and then, then they pulled him out the bottom and seal that back up again, and it'd still be not. What? You know. He never got in a barrel ever again. Of course he didn't, and he never fucking. Gave his granddad a fucking birthday card again, either. Yo, git. Yo, cunt. <laughs> so that's my list of people being stuck in unusual places. Um, and none of them are sexual. I think my favourite is probably the Stegosaurus leg, but yeah. for dramatic, cinematic Ooh, storytelling. Like a rapper. The children in the haunted castle, that's surrounded by good. wolves. That, that, that's that's a good one. I'd rather it as a more of ruins, but no, I still quite like it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that uh, Howling Four, I think it is, um, and it's a real bare bones castle. There's only like two, three members. Imagine, of imagine Argento directing that in very early eighties. Yeah, with a real like group, weird group of kids. Yeah. You know, all playing different instruments. There is. I, I wish I could find it again because I quite enjoyed it. There was like a movie of a group of kids, well, many Italian horror movies, a group of kids, 80s, go and find a castle. There's a wind and shit, and they do find a, a ruined castle. I can't think what it is. I'm thinking Udo Kier is their sort of teacher. Is there any adult? You know, Udo Kier is the teacher. Love yeah. It. Nice. That'd be a great movie. Yeah. Well, there we go, Bill. That was a brilliant list. Thank you, buddy. Um, and a goblin score, obviously. Of course, yeah. Mm. But the kids are sort of... They put the goblin score over the top of the kids while they're playing their instruments to make out that they're playing it. Yeah, OK. There I'm, we go. I'm down for that. I'll, I'll, we'll, produce, I'll produce. We'll, we'll get that made. All right, then. Okay. I'll phone Udo Kier up after this, and we'll... Uh, get Udo! Him Udo! 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 Well, Bill, if you could do up the dressing game, please... Huh? No, we don't want to see it. No. And, uh, take the list back with you. Thank you. And if you could take us out of here, Bill. Take us out, Bill, please. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. In every society, there are the deviants, the ones who are pure evil. We've been shooting this documentary. Love to roll. Take one. 100 yards beneath the surface of the earth exists a metropolis that mirrors ours in very many respects. I call it the marrow. William Decker claims that he's found monsters. I see their shapes moving through the woods. Is he crazy? Um, is, he, is he mentally ill? Is it all a hoax? You believe this? You're a believer? What if this guy's conspiracy theories are all true? Please don't get hurt. It's right up there, at the address to the marrow. Okay, do you, do you see anything? Oh God, he's right here in front of us now. I, 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 I don't see it. Turn, turn it on. Turn no. on the light. No, 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 no. Turn on the light if it's here. I want to no, see it. Turn off that light. Turn no. on the light. You're too blind to see what's going on around you. What are you gonna see? You're gonna see. Are you kidding me? You should just go. I warned you! I warned you some of them were dangerous! Mr. Decker! Just tell me the truth about one single thing! They know we found them. Stay away! So, here we go. Digging up the marrow from 2014. A documentary exploring genre-based monster art takes an odd turn when the filmmakers are contacted by a man who claims that he can prove that monsters are indeed real. Yes. Directed and written by Adam Green, starring Adam Green and starring the one and only... Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Ray Wise. Fucking hell. 
Fucking hell. Probably one of my favourite performances from Ray Wise. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, it's because of the idea of it, though, yeah? Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a really fun choice for Ray Wise. Really, really fun choice. Because Ray Wise fucking just loves it when he gets a character. You know, he's a real character to kiss. It. He just loves getting in there. Yeah. But you, it, well, it's a character to be. You get Ray Wise when you get Ray Wise, but we all love Ray Wise. Exactly, and I can't really think. I'm, I was racking my brains thinking who else could have played this role, you know? Yeah, it is, it's <clears throat> it's a nicely played role because it's uh, uh, it's, it's it's almost like a thin line. That you could almost put, probably just accidentally go more sort of almost parody or comedic or a different way, or you got to play it <clears throat> just right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, and I think Ray does it perfect. Indeed, and this, as, as we talked about in the intro, this is a a mockumentary, a an almost as close as to uh, found footage as you you're likely to get, really, um, because it's all you know, it's all shot, talking heads, um, on locate, like people are on location filming, so it's done as in, I suppose it, it is this a found footage movie. Um, it, yeah, you would put it in the found food genre. Um, it, it, uh, anything which is kind of filmed like this, because you've got some first uh, point of views or shots, and um, you would you would put in the, the umbrella of found footage. But it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not Blair Witch. Tr- like, as in an example. Yeah, because uh, it's not uh, in one style. location. <clears throat> they keep cutting back to. They go to different places. Oh, they like go to more, conventions. It's like a mockumentary. So, yeah. but there's plenty of these which are in the found footage realm. Which because this is what you have to do with them. Though you have to start it off like it is a documentary, and then it starts to thin the line between that and the reality, and then just going into like the whole POV shots and stuff like that. It's really cool this movie because. Um, it is a love letter in some ways to horror fans and to why people get into horror. And why I say that is because yeah, it does give you the behind the scenes of the whole horror, the community, the horror, and, you know, at the conventions at Fright Fest, no less, and many other horror conventions. And we actually get to see Mick Garris, Tom Holland, Kane Hodder's in this again as himself. You know, everybody plays himself apart from Ray Wise, who so- plays. William Decker. So Luke, who's there, shows his tattoos, all his tattoos. He's got a tattoo of Adam Green. It's a dude who um, uh, chatted to me and Dan around then. He just kind of it, popped it up at Fright Fest, then, didn't yeah. he? And, start to, and I think he, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty, I pretty much remember him saying um, that he'd just been off being filmed by Adam Green. And I was like, what, what do you mean you've been filmed by Adam Green? What for? And, and it's really confusing. Um, but he, and he said it was, I don't know, it was just filming cycle. I don't know, he's doing something. But, okay, and and he was really into the shadow of death, wasn't he? And um, was keen to sort of see that and yeah. talk to us about it. And but he he's, uh, he was in the film, yeah, with his Adam Green tattoo. Yeah, <coughs> that's cool. So this movie does blur the lines quite nicely because it has real horror fans in it. It has real horror directors. Yeah, everyone's playing talk, themselves in it. Talking about why they, especially at the beginning, we're talking about why they got into horror, what they love about monsters and supernaturals so stuff. So it's really interesting um, and a fun. But I think Adam doesn't didn't want to trick the audience into thinking this was real because the audience would know it wasn't anyway which is why they cast ray wise because he's such a a a personality that as soon as you see him in it you're like well this is definitely you know not going to be try and make itself out to be real yeah the other way of doing it is obviously you cast someone who no one knows and um you do it like that where you know a film like so example you could compare that next to um creep uh, that that where it starts off kind of going to be a documentary, then just starts to go off, and it kind of works. You know, obviously you don't know, but for this in this way, I I don't know. You could go that route, having an unknown saying that he has monster thing, but it just works better with Ray Wise because he's such a good actor as well. Yeah, it really is. Really plays it great. He really every scene he's in, he's you're just up watching scene, him. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let, let's get into it then. So really, basically, um, we start with the sort of talking heads 
you know why i got into i love monsters i love monsters because of this you know and we are at lots of different horror conventions including luke at fright fest and we see lloyd kaufman tony todd um and uh don coscarelli is there and he says do i think monsters exist i do i think they exist i just don't think we can see them they exist on a different plane you know, of existence but i do think they are there i do think there is such a thing as evil and uh it's really cool it leads you into even though you know this isn't real it leads you into that down that path of it just sets it up nicely for you do you know what i mean yeah and adam my name is adam green he says to the camera and he starts laughing oh i can't take myself seriously my name is adam green he tries it again and he talks about his fan base yeah, and talks obviously about because with any with anything you do in life, you're going to sometimes get fanatics who are uh, more that word the fanatic rather than the fan, a little bit more uh, 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 over the top, shall we say? Yeah, and he says people send him things, emails, things in the post. But he says the reason I'm putting this footage together is because recently I've been sent something by a man who calls himself William Decker. And he says he's found monsters and tells me that they're real and he wants me, Adam Green, to tell his story to the world. Great premise. Yeah. You know, take any horror director. Imagine the scenario of someone, and I'm sure they've had it, writing to John Carpenter, John aliens are real i know you directed the thing but listen aliens are real john i can prove it come on let's be friends come and meet me yeah yeah, yeah. i'm it's surprised a great premise. it's almost surprised it hadn't been done before mm. it feels feels like it should have been done mm. so adam is gonna go and meet this guy william decker played by ray wise so we get straight into the story really jump in the car the road trip um, and again, it's a, it's a dude saying that he's he's found like a hole. It's kind of kind of like your night breed, uh, if you remember yeah. that film. He's kind it of found just a, like that. He's found like <laughs> a hole, and it's like uh, 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 monsters living underground. Yep. They arrive at Detective because he apparently he used to be a cop. Detective yeah. William Decker's house, and, and there's obviously a discussion about should we go do this because like you generally, like, if you, if you, you know, people are sending you stuff, you're not going to go wicked. Let's go film this guy. Just it's like no, this dude's probably got a shotgun waiting for us or something. You know, Adam's wife is unhappy about him going. You can Some imagine of his it's friends just a bit are... like, really? Do you want to do this? Because like you don't know what this is and obviously and when it comes down to obviously he doesn't actually have found a hole with monsters underneath so why are you going to go and film it could be like oh, you know but the boy in adam green the young boy that the, is in the young boy or girl that's in all of us horror fans that does part of us wants he to want, believe he, he still he believes and he really really wants monsters to be real <laughs> yeah i guess I and, and if there are like, I'm, wants... I'm i'm with that with aliens and i'm with that with bigfoot and Nessie, I, I'd dig it with, but I don't know. I, I don't know if I want uh, real monsters. But I think he thinks if anyone's going to bring this evidence to the world, this could be a really cool opportunity as well. I, I, it's, yeah, it's kind of a fun project. But he's also got a deadline, which you find out later on. His producer says to him, like, you should be writing a show, which is Holliston, which we didn't really speak about. Earlier. Yeah, the new season TV of Holliston. Show does. And what are you doing? Why are you focusing on <clears> this sort of thing? But it's because he's got that childhood love of it, and he can't get that passion, you know, to not be his focus, his hyper focus, in fact. Well, they go to Ray Wise's house, William Decker's house. Adam's wearing his frozen t shirt. Really cool t shirt, actually. I like that. And, uh,. They meet him, and he tells them he's a reti retired police detective. And they make him up. They get all the makeup on him, ready for the... He said, do I, do I have to wear all this makeup? Yes, yeah, you do. They, well, they're just giving him a little bit of a touch up, obviously, you know, um, just to help out a bit. And um, they're sitting up behind him, and he's just like, be careful back there, don't touch my things. And he's playing it really well. He's playing it amazing. His house is full of memorabilia, boxes, drawings, art... We'll get into all of that in a, in a bit later on. 
Um, so they sit down and they start talking to him and interviewing him. And he says he has a theory that deformed children vanish. But do they vanish? Because no one knows where they go. And they're all looking at him like, what? And he says, I know where they go. I've discovered a hole in the earth that I've called the marrow. And it's about 100 yards under the surface of the earth. And underneath here is an entire civilization of these outcasts, these freaks, these deformities, these monsters. And they live there and they come out of the hole, out of the marrow occasionally. And I've seen them. And they're real. And I've got drawings of them. This is it's the ravings of a madman. And it's set up in a uh, sort of a documentary-style shooting format, uh, um, with the main focus obviously being on your yeah, yeah, person who's doing the interview. And um, But we, ca- we do have Adam and Casey look back, and you can see his eye line going to... Um, it is, it's Will, isn't it? Yeah, Will Barrett. Yeah. It's eye line going to Will behind the camera. Um, so it's in a bit like... Are you getting this? You're like, this is fucking gold. Like, yeah. what the fuck is this guy going about? Like, you know, you should at least as well be a little bit cautious of this guy because he could fucking lose it any second. But whether this is real or whether this is the ravings of a madman, this is, like you said, this is gold. They're getting, this is going to make a great story. Yeah, I would be thinking, I'd be <laughs> like, this is amazing. They're gonna let me get into editing this, you know. So he, uh, he tells them about uh, his old, his childhood. And again, only Ray Wise, with such conviction, can you you listen to these stories and really be sucked in. They're so compelling. He talks about when he was a loner as a child, he had no friends, and he hung out in an old lumber yard on his own, just outside of town near sounds a like cemetery. A, sounds like a song. When I was so, a young lad sitting at the lumber yard, I was a young lad sitting at the lumber yard. I had no friends, just the monsters also, in my heart. I also called it a yumba lord rather than a, a lumber yard. Oh, I've never been to a yumba lord before. Thank you, if you like. There's a brilliant moment here where he says, I saw a man with... And then he pauses for about ten seconds. Yeah. A serpent's mouth. And they're like... This is another time where Adam's like, <laughs> "Gold, what the fuck is he talking about? And he says, he had a, a forked tongue and snake eyes. And then he ran, I went around the lumber pile to find the man and he was gone. I never told anybody about this, but I went back to the place many times and I saw many other monsters, some big, some small. I saw their shapes. I've, I've got I've drawn them there's many different species of them and they're thinking this is incredible this is at the very least we can write a script off the back of this you know yeah, yeah. And do something with this um, he shows them footage of well, the entrance to well, the marrow that's the trouble though with making a documentary it is a very hard thing to do because you've got a point of like at some point we have to finish the doc filming and just cut the documentary. We can't keep going unless you've got a definitive ending point. Someone goes to prison or something like that. Trouble is with this. This is gold, what you're shooting. But if you actually haven't got any proof, you haven't actually got any actual monsters or anything like that, it's a bit of a dead end. There's like, we, we need, it doesn't go anywhere. That's the yeah. thing. It's a great lead. It's like, oh my God, this is like putting a hook in the uh, water and you've, you've, you've got me. But you can't keep me. You need to show me more, you know. Well, he shows them the footage of which, the hole. Which Adam does get to us later on and say, say that we need more stuff, you know. They can't see anything, obviously. It's just footage of, of what he calls the entrance to the marrow. Yeah. And then they say, well, look, we've got to go he, now. He says, I've got footage. And Adam's like, you've got footage? Well, that's amazing, show us. And it, but it's not as good as they're hoping they can, he says there's one of them stood there and they're like there's nothing there they're like can you see the one behind the tree and they're like no no Ray Wise we can't see anything <laughs> no Ray Wise we can't <laughs> so they say look we've got to go now it's going to take us a bit of time to pack up all our equipment and while they're doing that they see a, a door to a basement with a great big chunky chain across it it's not a rapper no he's not a rapper 
Although if Ray Wise was a rapper, that'd be amazing. Nice. I'd love that. Uh, he says, that's my storage room. Can, can we look inside? No. You've got to go now. You've got to go. So they pack up their equipment and they leave. So later, they're discussing um, over a barbecue. Yeah, it's a bit sketchy, like what's in there, which is a nice little uh, hook for us audience members. And they're talking about monsters. Do you want monsters to be real? Um, oh, are they scary or are they just misunderstood? This is where Riley says, you know, I'm really worried that this guy, his wife could says, I'm really worried this guy's a psycho. I don't think you should go back there. If he's got a chained up room and he's talking about all these monsters and drawings of monsters that he's, he's seen, this doesn't sound good to me. But they're like, no, no, it's great. It's cool. It's good. It's good. Adam's really into the project. Yeah, so yeah. is Will. Will's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go back there. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do that. So um, uh, it does get to a point, though. Uh, we do get to a point where he, even his wife is a bit like, I'm not really into it. We don't see she's not on camera, but he sort of says, like, I can't keep doing this. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it goes on for too long, doesn't it, the project? Uh, you after know? a while, yeah. We'll get, we'll get there. Well, the next day, they go and meet Decker in the woods. And he wants to take them to the spot, the entrance to the marrow. So they have to walk through a cemetery, as you do. Yeah, I, I like that. This is um, this movie does have quite a lot of rewatchability to it, because stuff like this, like just get, uh, Ray Wise in the daytime in a cemetery, and he's taking you to a monster hole. He doesn't want to see that. Yep, I want to see Ray Wise's hole. Yeah. Ray Wise's monster hole in the woods. Yep. Jesus Christ! Come check out, all right, lads. Come out to the woods and check out my monster hole. Are you, say, are you saying a large hole? Do no, see monsters the en- in the, the hole. entrance to my marrow. My entrance to my monster hole. Your, what, your huge hole? No, there's monsters. Different creatures go in and out of it. Not just at, a huge at hole. Time. I'm not just saying monsters in large. You my gotta pay hole. the troll toll to get into the monster hole. <laughs> So, um, are you saying kids' <laughs> soul? <laughs> That's so funny. A boy's soul, so isn't it? Are you saying a boy's soul? <laughs> I won't say the alternative. You made me cough. <clears throat> um, so go through the cemetery, and he says, just like it's on the other side of the cemetery. There's a bit of land, but just a bit of space, and that's where the uh, entrance to the boy's soul is. At the point, the entrance to the <laughs> the entrance to the marrow is. But he says this is all public land. It's, we should be fine with this. We should be fine. Well, they're not fine because the next scene is them. <laughs> it's cut to a cop telling them off, asking them what they're doing here. Why are you here? Yeah. And obviously, you know... And Ray's been really sketchy, just kind of looking the other way. Because oh, oh, oh. he said to him, I'm up here all the time, it's fine. And it's not. And they, the cop says, look, well, you need to leave before dusk. The cop's acting weird, like he knows something. He says, you, you can't be here past dusk. It's... it's Because Adam says, why? And he says, you just can't. Just move on. Um, it could be numerous... It could be various reasons. Um, generally they'd probably say oh because there's could be a there's a spate of crime up here or something like that or you know um so it's a little bit like does he know like people go missing up here and they've never they don't find any reason for these people going missing or people say or, they see things up here or? i think i think it's like potentially a government conspiracy that the government know about these deformities what, these and, things. and the government have made these or just put them underground and they've just managed to find their own way out and they've said to the cops, like, don't let anybody into that that area because, you know, the monsters. I don't know. But later, they as they as the cop leaves, they say to Ray, "Have you? Has he bothered you before?" And he says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gives me shit all the time." So this is like an encounter that Ray Ray Wise has had with this cop before. Um, and they get into the woods, and he says, "Listen, you must follow my instructions when we're here." You must listen to every word I say and follow my instructions. Yeah. Very. All right. Okay. Ray Weiss. Yeah. Then we get the little night one yeah, text it, come it, up. Yeah. It's nice. I like that. And it's dark and they chat. They're waiting in the dark and they chat a little bit. And Ray Weiss says something about an ex-wife. 
that doesn't give any other detail. And they, again, Adam Adam's great at doing the little looks to Will. Like, oh, I have to dig up on that one tomorrow and ask him a bit more about that. Okay, good. Um, and they discuss whether or not they should use night vision because they can't really see much with the camera and the lighting they've got. And then suddenly, in the middle of a conversation, Ray Wise shushes them all. Shush, 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 shush. Can you see that one over there moving really slowly? And we're doing what Adam Green and Will Barrett are doing. We're squinting so hard in the dark to try and see. Is there something there? I can't. I can't tell. Is it? Is it something there? And he says, "Did, did you see that one there?" And they're like, "I think I can see a tree branch. I, I can't. Yeah, can't see anything. To be honest with you." And then that's kind of it, really. That's and then it cuts to them reviewing the footage, uh, which is great. I like because. I, I, I just like stuff like this. I'm a nerd and I edit myself. So it's nice to be it's popped into the old editing bay there and uh, sitting there and just going over the fi- footage. I, I like this. One. Yeah, their, their buddy Josh is the editor um, and he sort of sits there with them like going through the footage. He says, he says look, I can't see anything. I, I, a- I feel quite bad for him later on where he says, no, I've just been watching 11 hours or something of graveyards footage. Yeah. So uh, it'd be quite good if you're looking for ghosts, but after a while, like, I feel quite bad for him. Be like, oh god. Uh, and Adam Green is pissed off at this point because he thinks, oh, this guy's just full of shit. You know, obviously, you know. Well, it monsters. starts to confirm it a little bit when he starts to speak to some of his other director buddies. Yeah. Well, then they go and see Decker again, and Decker then says, "Look, I want to show you some drawings of the various creatures I've seen." Again. Okay. Balls. Okay. Well, we're back now. We're back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The first person is this one, Vance, and it's basically like a big version of um, uh, what's the kid from uh, Trick or Treat called with the sack head? Sam. Sam. Um, and it's a bit like that. And he said, "Oh yes, I've drawn that. I, I guess he wears that sack over him, so he doesn't uh, show with the real, you know, the real face to anybody." But I believe that he is responsible for bringing new members to the underground world and they're just thinking he's dreamt all these characters up this is brilliant stuff yeah so he's drawn them that he says some of them wear weird masks Uh, some of them you know cover their faces others are disguised some are big some are small Uh, there's a conjoined creature which i i've drawn here i call it frog and huck and they're like right okay he mentioned some he says my son drew that one for me and they go well you've got a son you've got a son yeah he he just brushes past it moves away from that subject yeah but he says look the lights scare them they scare them away that's the trouble i think that's why they didn't really come out the other night and adam this is where adam says look i believe you i really do but we need to really see these monsters. Otherwise, I'm, I can't carry on with this project with you. So Ray Wise is like, all right, we'll go back to the graveyard. So night two, Gav. I know, it's decent. And this time, Will's picked up some cheeky little night vision goggles. Um, and they're sat there again, waiting. And they can see the, the entrance, which is just a hole in the ground, you know, yeah. just in the distance. And, uh, all of a sudden, shh, shh, there's one of them over there behind a tree. And Will's saying, I can't see anything. I'm going to have to turn the light on. And he's like, don't, stop making so much noise. And he's like, I'm going to turn the light on. Don't turn the light on. Well, they turn the light on, Gav, don't they? Yep. And I jumped out of my fucking seat at this point. Is it the first time you've seen it? Second time I've seen it. But you'd forgotten? I'd forgotten. Uh, so it made you jump. I, I'm just, I'm too old. In the it didn't just make me jump. It made me go, whoa, fucking hell. Really? And my wife laughed her head off at me. That's so funny. Because she was crocheting in the chair. So she wasn't, she was watching, but not like fully watching. Yeah. So she just saw me jump up in the air. Um, really great shot of this monster, really up close to the camera. Because they've, obviously they've turned the light on and it's just right in their faces you got to mention uh, the the artist as well involved in this um, yeah come up with all the artwork like the posters uh, Alex, fucking Alex amazing Puddy. it's uh, just beautiful artwork he does lovely great stuff yeah really really cool creature design and artwork yeah 
Um, so uh, Ray, wow. Wise, Ray Wise is pissed though because he says don't turn the lights on. But Adam's sort of like we've got to see. He's saying turn the lights on, turn the lights on, and he said don't turn the lights on. And yeah, so he says we have to go now. They know we're here. We're done. We have to go. And he calls it. So back at the editing suite, uh, they check it again, and Josh actually thinks that they they're messing with him. So what, what, what effects is it? What is? It? And he say no, this is real. Yeah, Adam is like super excited at this He's point. He's very like, excited. The young like, the young lad in him has come out. Yes. Um and they rewatch the footage over and over again and then Kane, Kane Hodder, Hodder comes in, yeah. Because they've called him to come, come and check, come it check out. this out and he says, Oh, it's pretty good, guys, uh whose effects is it? You know. And they're like, It's not effects and he's like, Oh come on, like what what's this you're working on? Is this one of your new movies? And they're like, King, this is a documentary. This is real, this is real found footage. And then he starts talking about, like, found footage. No one cares about found footage. There's bollocks, you know, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's quite a cool meta sort of conversations going yeah, on. I guess. I like it. It's cool. Um, two weeks goes by. And Decker says, you need to be more careful this time. So they meet up with him two weeks later. Yeah, they sort of apologise and say, you know, explain the situation and stuff. And he kind of gives, he kind of says, okay, fine. He says to them, look, if there's a way that we could do it without the lights or without us being there. And Adam says, well, funnily enough, Will and I have been discussing this for the last two weeks. We've got a plan, which is we're going to strap five cameras up around the trees and we're going to make a fake lamppost that looks like all the cemetery lampposts, which will give off just enough light that with all the cameras that are hidden from anyone's view, none of us have to be there. We just got to set all these up in the day, yeah. and we'll do it nice and quietly as well. And then we can come back and review the footage in the morning. And Ray Wise loves this idea. He says, "Great, this is good. This is good. You know, I like that." So they set up this fake lamp post, and um, they even make it look like the ones that are in the cemetery. And then they put all the cameras up, um, and they're all ready to go. And it's very exciting. We're like wondering what they're going to capture on on the footage. Mm. Well, we cut to another interview there. Just before they start interviewing him, though, Ray Wise, he decides to put on a little song, doesn't he? Yeah. On the on the vinyl it's record a, player. He, Adam says to me, um, yeah, you can't really have music on because you can't really edit around the music. We can't, like, you know, like cut between your takes. And he just blanks them, doesn't listen, and says, I love this song. And he says, oh, okay, Who, who's it by? I don't know. And he says, it's my favourite song. Yeah, oh, he says, I love this song. It's my favourite. I don't know. Like, well, what is it? I don't know. The way he says it, though, is like, I don't know. It's in almost questioning it. So, so it's in like to be like, why does it matter? It's my favourite song. Why do I need to know who it's by? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit in that band camp. There's a loads of songs I know they're amazing. I don't know what their names are. I will know who they're by, but I won't know what the song's called. So funny. Um, well, this interview now, he starts talking about he says there's over 40 different species because he's been studying these for like 30 years 40 years he says so far i've discovered at least 40 different species of monster and i found six different entrances all over the u.s yeah um i've traveled all up and down you know looking for them there's one entrance near an ihop i was about to say to you no no not six entrance half a dozen i was like don't don't say that Kev. He says, "Why an IHOP?" Well, they like says, pancakes. They like pancakes. <laughs> have you have you been to an IHOP before? I have. Yeah, in Canada, I actually yeah. went to an IHOP. Yeah, I've been to one in LA. Yeah, yeah. They're all right. Got a great big stack of pancakes. Absolutely amazing. Pancakes and bacon and shit. That's right. Um, he talks more about. Um, he says it's countrywide, and he says, "Oh, there's one girl. There's a girl monster that I've nicknamed Brella." And they're like, what? And he says, yes, she's got uh, like a big umbrella for her head. And I once followed her and she picked up a drunk, sex crazed college guy outside of a bar in an alleyway. And, you know, and they're like, what? And they're like, he's like, you know, and I, what? What happened? Are you saying that a monster had sex with a human? And he's like, well, I didn't see it. But all I know is three weeks later. A boy's body was found in the creek in the woods. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God. Now you're telling me that an umbrella-headed monster lady raped 
a college kid to death and left his body in the woods. And he's like, yeah. Yeah. Pure evil. He says pure evil. Although not all of them are as dangerous as others, but some of them are pure evil. So they're intrigued. And we're not doing our listeners justice, really, because it, part of the, yeah. it's, the, it's the artwork that, yeah. as he's describing them. It's so simple because we're not seeing these monsters. We're seeing these sketches of them. And you're imagining what these monsters might look like if they were real. It's fantastic. They're back in the studio and uh, their producer's there. And she's saying, like, you know, you you go, uh, you go, like, focus on what's at hand here the tv show not 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 this thing what, what is this thing what are you doing uh as a producer does and would do yeah um and like you say the director of photography there uh, says like well no we can we can kind of carry on but yeah he, no no this is where his wife says like oh i don't know maybe then this is where adam actually starts getting a bit like why don't you fucking you could actually help me out a bit instead of like you know oh no that's later on yeah. That's when he's having the argument with Ray. And he says, you could back me up, Will. No, sorry. Wrong boy. Anyway, the producer's saying, you should be focusing on this. And he's focusing on the wrong thing. We promised we'll make the next season of Holliston. And, you know, you're doing your funny little project with this crazy guy. But he says, look, based on the footage of that monster that we saw, I think we're just going to put Holliston on hold. And this starts to cause some tension between some of them. Will Will's like, look, I'll follow you to the end of the earth and back, Adam. But... It does seem a bit crazy to put this TV show on hold. But you know, if that's what you want to do, let's do it. And Adam does. He wants to push on. He says, let me ask you one question, Adam. Do you 100% believe in this guy and these monsters? And he says, I 90% believe. And he says, well, that's good enough for me. Let's do it. So yeah. the project continues. Yeah. So they collect some equipment. Um and all the cameras from where they put them in the woods. And they are reviewing the camera footage. They they also lost the camera, though. Yes. Oh, yes. Camera three or or camera four is missing. Uh, So Adam's like, I'll pay for it. Yeah, because they argue about that. They argue about that. There's some um, parallels to Blair Witch with this, like equipment go missing, or that's my equipment, or that equipment's got to be back, you know, that kind of thing. You're always going to get that with frame footage type movies um so they they look at the footage and they see a new ray's like there's a new species a new species of monster i'm going to call it little bigfoot love it little bigfoot you love bigfoot don't you say yeah um is this the one where adam's like can i he's like why don't you name it and he says no i think we should call it little bigfoot and he's like really he's like yeah little bigfoot that's what i'm going to call it Okay, Ray, you obviously... I want to know his thought process when he's naming these monsters. Uh, I, I don't think there's much to it, to be honest with you. Well, the editor, Josh, is now... He believes this now, because he's looking at this footage with them. Um, and we go... We then cut to one month later. We're at another horror convention. And he shows the a printout of the original creature to director Tom Holland, horror director Tom Holland. And Tom Holland's like, that's really great. Who does your work? Yeah. Who's doing your, your special effects? And he's like, no, 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 no. This isn't special effects. This is, you know, this is real. I, I've got this from. This is the sort of thing. If you would say, do this for someone and say, no, 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 no. This is real. Straight away, you were like. Why, why are you trying to take the piss out of me? Why, what are you doing? Because it's obviously not real. There's not real monsters. So you're never going to believe them, especially in the day and age now. That's why you can never believe whatever you see on the YouTube or anything, because the way it is. It is going to be that sort of thing. Like, what are you saying? Like, what do you mean it's real? How do you respond to that? Like, and, it, and if they're doing it really with earnest, and they're like, no, no, honestly, and you're like, and you have respect for the person, like, okay, like, you know. It's a bit of a weird one. And this is where a bit of a uh, little bump in the road hits now, because he says, no, 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 Tom, it's, um, I've met this guy, basically, this guy's taking me to this place where there are real monsters, he says. And- but regard uh, what he was about to say, which you could go in a minute, d- regardless of this, which you're about to say, um, uh, they have got proof of monsters, though. You know, st- it, it, you know, no one else has. But yeah, go on, what does he say? 
Well, let's talk he to says, he says, hang on a minute, this isn't that Dacker guy, is it? It's a bit of a kick in the teeth, Adam. He says, Mick, Mick Garris, come over here. Mick comes over and he says, hey, Mick, you never guess who uh, Adam's been speaking to. And he says, who? He says, you remember that Decker guy? And he says, oh, not this guy again. And Adam Green's poor heart is broken at this point. He's looking at them like, yeah. what do you mean? You've heard of him. And he's like, yeah, he's written to us. He's written to John Carpenter. He's written to everybody in horror, you know, and said, oh, I found monsters. Come and write my story for me. Oh, it's a load of nonsense. It's just some crazy guy. And Adam just looks so hurt. Because these are his his peers, his colleagues in the film industry, in the horror film industry, but they're also his heroes, Mick Garris, Tom Holland, and then they're talking about John Carpenter. And he's thinking, I've been led up the garden path here. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I've fallen for this. He's very worried. He's very embarrassed. And we see some shots of him sort of in the car now, sort of very sort of down. So they go and they say, he says, look, what we'll do is we'll meet him for a coffee. We'll meet Decker for a coffee. And we'll just ask him. See what he says. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and give him the chance to explain. They ask him outright, who else have you contacted? No one, he says. You haven't contacted anybody else? No, never. You're the first person I've come to. The reason I've come to you, and he spins a really good sort of, I like your work, but you work slightly outside of Hollywood, Adam. You know, and, and this is why I've come to you, because I think you're the guy to come to with this kind of information. So he's kind of now on the fence, because he, he, he's been told by his colleagues in the horror industry, this guy's full of shit, he's come to us in, in, the, in the past, but he's also thinking, but I still kind of want to believe. And it's a great story and a great, I had this. I, it, I doubt it is, but I had this wonder if the hole was a metaphor for Hollywood. And, Interesting. And like you and I, as well, would love growing up Hollywood, and it's such an amazing thing with all these such cool things there. And we just want it to be real and all that. And in the end, we find out that it's just a load of monsters in Hollywood, like Harvey Weinstein and people like that. Yeah. I wondered if it was like some sort of Hollywood <laughs> metaphor and just loads of horrible people in the in the business that are out for themselves. They're just that's a very monstrous. interesting... That's a good take on it, Gav. Mm. Very, very good take on it. So in the hold, it's like Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, R. Kelly. Well, just the, just the people who are out for themselves. Yeah. I didn't know if it was a metaphor for Hollywood. Interesting. Well, only Adam will know that, um, I guess. He wrote this, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, Decker lies to them, and he says, nope, no one was there. Um, they they uh, find some footage from one of the cameras that shows Decker arriving at the hole in the middle of the night. Yeah, the editor, uh, Josh, is just a bit like, you got to check this out, it's a bit weird. And shows in, it's nice to have these little bits go back to the editing suite to watch the video. I think, do you know why I like the editing suite? And I love being an editor. Of all the things I do, I could spend all, most of my time, all my time editing happily, is uh, it's a safety blanket. It's a screen there. It's not real. Do you know what I mean? And you can pause, you can rewind, you can, you can fast it, you forward. Can go, you can lighten, you can dark, and you can do anything you want. You could change the most horrible thing into the nicest thing possible if you wanted. You could do anything you want in editing. Well, Josh shows them that um, at like 3 a.m., Decker arrives at the, the Marrow in the cemetery, and he turns off all the cameras, but he forgets about camera four. Mm. And then he crouches down at the hole. That's weird, isn't it? And they're like, what's he doing? Is he talking to it? It looks like he's talking to it. Is he putting something in? Oh, he's getting something out with a spoon. No, no, he's not. He's putting something in with a spoon. He's feeding something in the hole with a spoon. What the fuck? And they're like, this is cr this is taking a weird turn. Then he turns all the cameras back on. Um, and then they look at the second night's footage. And they see him just crying talking to something in the hole and then just crying for ages with his head in his hand and they're like this guy's not well man he's really like he's got something going on here yeah um they turn their chairs around yeah. to face the camera yeah and while they're chatting about all of this business if you're very keen-eyed 
you will see a monster on the screen behind them, don't you? Oh, yeah. Funny enough, this time around, I didn't, but I do know the bit you mean, Kurt. Uh, I, I, seeing it in a seeing the premiere on a massive screen, I think you can see it quite easily. Yeah. So, basically, there's a load of tombstones um, behind them on just a still image. Well, well, it's not still, but it's just, like, hours of footage of the same thing, so nothing's moving. But while they're chatting to the camera and talking about what they think he could be doing and how his mental health is, one of the tombstones lifts up, and it's the head of a monster. So this monster is called Tombstone Head, I think, and it kind of just scuttles off, off, off camera. And, of course, they haven't seen it because they're looking at us, the audience. They're discussing to the camera, you know, what they what their thoughts are. They never see it, but we see it. And yeah. apparently there's loads of monsters in this. I've only really spotted a couple in the shadows. Oh, but, okay. But there are loads. So this is definitely one that's worth um, repeat viewing. I've got this on DVD, actually. Um, Adam's theory is that he thinks his kid died because he mentioned his kid doing a drawing, yeah. and he thinks he's suffering, really suffering mentally. And they uh, think they need to find out what's going on with the backstory of Decker. So he says, we, the only way we can do this is to find someone who knows him. And he was a cop in Boston, so it's like, well, they're back, they they were originally from Boston, so maybe we can go back to Boston and um, have a break, uh, see some family, and uh, just go chat to the detective or someone. Yeah, so they, they make a call, they get a, a contact, at the Boston PD, and they fly there, um, they they go and speak to this cop, who says, look, I've worked here for 50 years, I know every detective that's come and gone, there's been never been anybody by the name of William Decker that's worked here, I'm really sorry, but even if there was, I'm not going to be able to give you any information on him, am I? Because the information is protected. Yeah. But I can tell you now, there's never been a William Decker working here. And they're like, and again, it's another kick, another kick for Adam. Because he wants to believe, and we do as well, the audience, we want to believe this. Yeah. So they fly back and they decide, the first thing they're going to do is go straight to the Marrow without Decker. Yeah, at, let's just at, fucking get on it. At night time. And uh, they're just, we don't want him interfering. Let's just go and do it our own way without him giving us instructions. My heart was fucking beating at this point because, again, this is in my second view and I couldn't remember some of this. Well, it's actually very American Wealth in London uh, opener when they're walking through the moors and they go off after being this Lord Lamb. Uh, when they're going along, one of them falls over the camera. Yeah, in a moment, and it's very American for London. And they're making little quick jokes at each other and stuff yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, it feels it. It does feel it. It's almost like they're laughing nervously because they're both too. They're yeah, both a bit, a bit scared, but they yeah. don't want to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, they hear some noises as they get closer to the entrance to the marrow, and oh, it stinks! It really smells. Um, put your uh, head the in. The hole smells. Yeah, it's the a hole smelly smells. hole. Ray's Ray's hole. It's a stinks. smelly, dark, smelly monster hole. Um, they hear some noises, it smells bad. Uh, he puts his head in and he shouts, Hello, monsters! I've got to say here, this whole scene going on, I really enjoyed this whole scene going on here with the shoe that falls off in a minute and all that stuff, but it very much makes me think and reminds me of Abba and Costello. It reminds me of an Abba and Costello sketch. <laughs> it's it's so, just, it really <laughs> does, the whole situation of the whole. Hey, you know what? Adam Green probably is a big Abba and Costello fan as well. He, yeah, he, he's possibly. from that generation, you yeah, know. Yeah. I, I didn't really see that myself, but I, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, he trips in his shoe. He says, help me, help me. What is it? My shoes. Something's taken my shoe off. It's gone down a hole. And that, he's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, because he's like, no, it didn't. He says, something fucking took the shoe off my foot. And I don't believe you. And he says, okay, this is great. I love this. This is when you fucking turn the tables of power on someone. Okay, then you go pick up my shoe out of that hole. Will if says, you don't think anything's there and you think I'm full of shit, go on then. And he won't do it. And it's just like, ah, I gotcha. But then that does mean, oh, I've got to go get me own shoe. Well, initially, he says, what are you going to do? Walk back to the car and just your sock? He says, well, yeah, I don't really want to reach into it's the hole. It's a real good fun setup here. I really like this. It's like, says, it's, it, I tell you what, the trouble is with this, it's such a great setup. The payoff isn't as good as it should be. I was quite good. It's almost like a really good joke build up here. And it just doesn't land as well as it should. But I do like this whole build-up of him putting his foot in the hole. It's such a good tension build-up. 
he reaches in and he manages to get his shoe back. Uh, it takes him a couple of attempts to reach right in there. And all of a sudden, we get a bit of a jump scare because uh, when the camera pans back up, Decker's appeared in the middle of the woods. Yeah, and I, it's a shame. I think it was too quick. It should have been that whole hand, uh, foot going into that hole. Linger on that for longer and sustain that for a little bit more. I think that tension would have been fucking brilliant. Then have Decker come along. And he starts shouting, what are you doing here? You're disrupting everything. You're yeah, interfering. Yeah. He's pissed. He's really annoyed. And then we cut to, they're, they're back at the car. And he keeps saying, don't film this, don't film this. And Will sort of lies to him and says, the camera's off. Uh, the camera's off now. Obviously, it's not. And they confront him at this point. They say, look, we know you lied to us. We know you've tried this well, with lots of other directors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've even been to the Boston PD. And he says, well, that's because I was a private detective. They're not going to know me. You know, there's lots of private detectives. So they have this sort of argument. But then, and in the middle of it... Yeah. But then... Slimer with legs sort of runs past them. <laughs> Fucking horrible little thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. And they're all like, what did I see? What I think I just saw? And then they hear lots of noises. Well, they hide, and it sounds like other deeper beings, like deeper voice things. And that one yeah. was really high-pitched, so having deeper means it's larger. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean that that's good. This next one is the scariest one, man. Because they're looking around frantically with the camera and then they see a balloon in the tree. And he's like, oh, it's just a balloon. But then the balloon lifts up and it's the top of a head of a weird demon clown face it's so creature. Cool. Yeah. It's fucking horrendous, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and they start running. And this is very Blair Witch now. They're being chased, very frantic, cameras sort of panning around everywhere. And I mean that in a, a good way, you know, Blair Witch is obviously incredible. Um, and lots of noises behind them. It's good sound design here. They get back to the car and they get in the car and they turn the lights on in the car and in front of them is Vance the sack head. Hanging out. The, and he's but he's quite big, big bulky bloke and then the sack lifts up and there's just these big fucking spiky tentacle things coming out the back of him yeah, it's so cool it, it's that, it, all practical from yeah, what i can see the chest does look a little bit rubbery um but i do like the idea of it it's decent and it starts grabbing at the car reaching in trying to pull them out of the car and you wonder if it's going to total the car or not but they manage to drive away yeah and they get back to, to Deckers. Obviously, they're really shook up now. They really are monsters. They've just been attacked by several of them. Um, they're all arguing. Uh, are we going to run away? Are we not? What are we going to do? Um, and and Ray says, I don't want to run away. I've got to go back there because I don't want to lose him. Yeah. Who? I don't want to lose him. Who? I've got to go back there and dig. Don't you see? I've got to go and dig. My son! Dun, dun, dun! Yeah. Um, so they say, well, look, 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 look. it's very late. Here's what we'll do. We'll do anything you want. Just let us come with you. He says, okay, meet me here at sunrise. Come back in a few hours at sunrise. So they go back and they get barely any sleep, you know, because it's only about two or three hours from sunrise. And they get to the house in the morning and they're knocking on the door and there's no answer. And then he sees one of the neighbours pulling away off of her driveway. So he runs over and he says, excuse me, excuse me. I'm looking for Mr. Decker, William Decker. Who's he? The guy that lives here. Well, this house has been empty for a year. What? What do you mean it's been empty for a year? Yeah. Oh, she said he's, he runs back. She said there's been no one in this house for a year. Yeah. Well, let's go in the house. They break in, don't they? Is that right? Yeah. They break into the house. And the house is empty. Well, it, not it, a... it's pretty much open. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And there's not a single thing in there. Everything's been taken. No sign of uh, anyone ever living there. However, they see that the door uh, is open that had the chain on it. Yeah. Well, let's go down in the basement, they say. What's in the basement, Gav? Uh, it's just uh, shit. Uh, yeah, literally. Yep. It's basically like 
the end of one of my parties. Just loads of shit and handcuffs everywhere. <laughs> really? And spoons. Loads of spoons where he's been feeding something. Yeah. Uh, and a hole in the wall that leads back out into the sort of cemetery. Yeah. Um, so they they go back out to the marrow and the hole has been covered over. It's gone. Maybe the creatures have moved on. Maybe they were never there. Think of the people who had to then go in and clean that house up. And then I started thinking about the sort of people who have to do house cleanups and what they find sometimes. Have you ever seen that movie Curdled, that Tarantino-produced movie no. about the, the girl? There's a, It's really good. I've got it on VHS. It's about a girl who gets a job as a crime scene cleaner. She goes in once everything's done and she has to clean up all the blood and guts and... She kind of starts getting turned on by it. Um, it's a really good movie, really fun movie. It's called Curdled. No, I've not seen it. Yeah, it's good, good stuff. Um, yeah, just reminds me of that. But yeah, uh, so that's the end of it, really. A few months go by, and Adam says he's not heard anything from Mr. Decker. His number doesn't work anymore. But he says very solemnly to the camera however camera 2 was delivered to me recently yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and here is the footage and then I forgot this ending man Jesus okay damn. so the footage is we're in some kind of dark underground cavern you can hear flies buzzing around and you something's got the camera in its hands and it's going walking along and it comes up to a cage and inside the cage is a naked Ray Wise <laughs> I know again again it sounds like one of my parties it does naked Ray Wise um, and he looks at the camera and he says um, I was wrong there's no marrow there's no monsters there's no such thing and whatever you do don't come looking for me don't come looking for me ah! and then the thing that's filming him so it's banging the cage yeah However, that isn't the end of the footage because the footage then cuts to something walking along outside Adam Green's house. It breaks in through his front door, creeps around his house and into his bedroom where him and his wife are asleep in the bed. It goes right up to his face. Right. Goes past his wife's bum first. Yeah. Shows her bum. Don't know why. That's the second time her butt's been in this, actually. She was yeah. in her underwear earlier. Yeah, don't know why. Um, goes right up to Adam's face, and then a weird sort of deformed hand reaches out and grazes his face. It does. It gives him a little rub. Ooh. little like, hello, you're having a nice sleep there, Adam Green. And then we get a bit of a loud noise, which makes Adam look up and jump, and that's the end. Did you eat the monster to Perth? That's where he went to the wife's house. Oh. It's the monster going up, isn't it? Like, yes. Very nice. Human ass. Reminds me of Ray Vise's monster hole. Um, and that's the end. We And we play out to the credits with Ray Wise's favourite song, who he doesn't know the artist of playing over the credits. And that is that. I hope I grow up to be Ray Wise. Oh, I'd love to be Ray Wise. Do you know I'd love to be Wesley Snipes? I was talking about this the other day. Wesley you grow up to be Snipes. Yeah, because in Blade, man, there's no one cooler than him, and I just kind of want to be Wesley Snipes. Yeah, I could. Uh, there's cool people I could go for like that. I just pulled a Ray Wise card just for a moment, but like you can be you can be Ray Wise. Okay. <clears throat> um, I... this movie is my second viewing. It's fucking brilliant. Um, repeat viewings might diminish that, but also I don't think they will because I think I'll spot more creatures. Yeah, it's a fun movie. Um, I haven't seen it for a long time. I got it on DVD in the saw premiere and I haven't seen it for a long time. Um, but it's still an enjoyable film. It's still going to stay in my collection. It's a movie which I'll be like, oh, I fancy watching that, put it out to watch, you know. So it's a my, thumbs up from me. Yeah, it's a thumbs up from me. It's Monster my favourite it's my favourite of Adam's films. Oh, interesting. Um, and I said this to you a few days ago, and it might be controversial. This film, to me, is as good as the original Blair Witch Project. And I know it's not a strict fan footage film, but it does the same for me 
that, that most of the original Blair Witch does. Great scripting story, really engaging, sucks you into the story. And I think what I love about it is the reality of Mick Garris, Tom Holland being in it, just to remind you that this is sort of semi set in a real world. Um, and if it wasn't for Ray Wise playing the main character, then I'd be sucked in even more. But I give this a strong, strong eight out of 10. It's on IMDb. I absolutely love this. And I bought it. Um, rather than rent it for Prime, I bought it like I do sometimes because uh, I thought I know I'll be coming back to this one. I remember loving it the first time. In fact, I believe you lent it to me the first time. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, so absolutely love this movie and this is my favourite and it's very, very different to Frozen. It's completely different kettle of fish. Um, Frozen's more acting and thriller almost, you know, and this is like balls to the wall meta mockumentary horror uh and there's not quite a film quite like this that i've seen oh good i'm glad you feel like that i don't agree with you uh com- your comparison to blair witch blair witch i think so far more superior don't uh, get me wrong blair witch is the absolute granddaddy of it all it's a different film though they are both different films um so comparing them is quite hard i think really um but uh, i do like think this is a very good film as well though it's a very enjoyable it is well there we go guys adam green adam thank you keep making more go back and make us another one please you don't have to do another hatchet just do another horror movie that's what, we, what i would say yeah totally um yeah unfortunately like i said he was penned to do considering he is the pen the writer who's gonna do some stuff and then just <clears> you know covid and shit like that put a kibosh on it well i look forward to the day that i see an, an article saying new adam green horror on its way yeah, I, really do. I, don't know, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he is possibly doing something in a little bit of secrecy uh, working on something I'm sure well he turns 50 in a few months so maybe uh, for his 50th birthday he can whip something together for us just like that just like that for his just, birthday just for present, us for his birthday he do, he do something for other people just for us I'm sure no just me and you anyway uh, yeah it's a good and enjoyable film so uh, yeah do check it out listeners and we will be back for the outro indeed And we're back. We're back again to say goodbye. We're back again to say goodbye. It's been another episode with Dan and I. Oh, a nice little rhyme there, Gav. Well done. Thank what you. rhymes with Gav? Have. I used the lav. Why do you have to put me in the toilet? I look at you and I think poo poo. Anyway, do you feel I've been more focused this episode? Yes, I do. Listeners, let us know. I think he has. I actually think I have, and it's quite good, because the listeners know me very well and my brain going a little wandering. And um, let's see if this stuff works, you know? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Yeah. Lion's Mane Mushroom. If you were going to be a mushroom, you'd want to be that one, because that's got the best name. Oh, uh, uh, this is Button Mushroom. Uh, lion's. I'm Lion's Mane. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was episode 149. So that means we've got another semi-landmark episode, really. Episode 150 coming Absolutely, up. Absolutely, think about Bloody that. Bloody yeah. hell. Which is funny, because we've been doing uh, a shout-out to Adam <clears throat> and Joe's uh, podcast, The Movie Crypt. I didn't even mention it earlier. If Indeed. you're creative, especially a filmmaker, it's fucking brilliant. It's just filmmakers going on there talking about their films. They've had all sorts on there, loads of people, everybody. You know, Robert England, all sorts. Um, very, very, very good. Um... Uh, but yeah, they, they've been doing their show a few months before we started, and they they're up to a good five hundred odd episodes, if not more. And we're coming up to one hundred and fifty. But what that means, Gav, is we've done um, over one episode a month on average for ten years. Does it? So yeah, one hundred and fifty ten years. That's fifteen episodes. Okay, that's, a year that's on not, average. That doesn't make me feel <laughs> so bad. Because we've taken probably nine, ten months off. We've if had you add, add up all yeah. the hiatuses, maybe I, a year. I gotta say, very much another thing with Adam. They didn't, he's never stopped a week of podcasting in ten years. Even, he's an absolute machine. Even when he's going through divorce and all like 
he had a bad moment when a friend died and a divorce all at the same time he still just kept podcasting and smiling and doing it every week it's like fucking hell I couldn't no I couldn't I, I, I had to stop when I went through a fucking mental breakdown and shit yeah I couldn't do it so well done on that but uh, we well could well done indeed anyway we are but still yeah. here we are still here. So in the next episode, 150, is another p p p p patron p p p p big 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 and it's RJ McCready's oh, turn. Back again. Back again for his round two. And he's as as I've mentioned previously, he's picked a couple of London gangster flicks. I know. This is gonna be a strange one. Obviously we're a horror podcast, but we do like to do genre, cult and other stuff. And this is this is it. people get killed so we, yeah. we can allow it so 1980s the long good friday with bob oskins bob fucking oskins and the 1998 classic lock stock and two smoking barrels i could do so many east end accents it's gonna be brilliant yeah so talking of tom holland for episode 151 we'll be continuing the franchise that he started by covering child's play three hmm from 1991 and of course the follow-up bride of chucky yeah from 1998 so a couple of chucky movies coming up there as well and then we'll be back to another director special Who because we got? episode 152 will be our fourth john carpenter <laughs> special because we hell. fucking love him uh, our fourth John Carpenter it's special. It's an excuse to talk about John Carpenter movies. It is, it really is. Um, um, be many more to come, I should imagine. We'll even cover some of the ones that are considered rubbish at some point. Um, we've picked one each. Gav has picked In the Mouth of Madness. My 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 beautiful Sarah will be uh, gleaming with happiness now. Bit of Sam Neill, goodness. Um, 1994. And I've picked the 1983 classic... Stephen King written John Carpenter directed Christine which I've only seen the once and wasn't very fond of so which is crazy to me because I love it so much yeah I, so I'm intrigued to do it with a reviewer eye I've got to be honest with you actually now you've said that you've just reminded me I've only seen In the Mouth of Madness once what the fuck I is know. wrong with you I really enjoyed it it's fucking really... amazing I know oh so yeah, but you've only seen Christine once, and it's a cult classic. No, I don't. No, I'm not. I don't. I'm not putting them two together. In Mouth of Madness is no, fucking no, brilliant. No, 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 no. If you're saying no, that, no, I'm no, saying no. that. No, 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 no. So all right, all right. After the end of that show, we will compare both of them. Okay. We'll compare our what? What? Films. All oh, right. Okay. So that's 150, 151, uh, 152. It's going to be brilliant. Not our penises. No. Yeah. Yeah. The episodes. Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Looking forward to those. <clears throat> okay. Looking forward to that. Right, let's do some admin, and then we can say goodbye to everybody. Do, do your thing. I'll do my thing. So, as always, we have been the podcast on Haunted Hill. Thank you, everybody, for listening, supporting, sharing, liking, and all the other things that you do. We are a proud member of Legion Podcast Network. You can find out more about them if you go and visit legionpodcast.com where you can find out not not just us and all of our shows that we've done in the past, but all the other shows that are on there, with all their episodes too. Um, we're all on uh, Facebook. If you go to Legion Podcast Facebook page, you can join that. Or you can join our little private party over on the Podcast on Haunted Hill Facebook page. It's a sexy party. It's a sexy Anything party. Anything goes. Ray Wise is in a cage naked in this party, so come on and join him. There's a bowl over there. Go put your keys in it. Put your keys in there and pick up one of Ray Wise's handcuffs. Um, you can email us at the podcast on Haunted Hill at Outlook.com if you wish to message us or talk to us about anything or ask us a question or tell us, this is shit, you should really stop what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, which we won't listen to because we've been doing it for 10 years now so we don't care back off mate we don't care I'll, I'll just move your email to the spam folder how about that because <laughs> I'm hard like come that. at us we are just delete it <laughs> that's how hard I am I'm a keyboard warrior wherever you're listening to us now is where you can continue to listen to us we are on Spotify YouTube Podknife Apple and many 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 other places 
we're also on instagram which we use mainly to promote the show and link to episodes uh that's the podcast on haunted hill insta we mentioned sanctuary moon briefly which is our latest uh short film through yeah. deadbolt films media um if you go and de- go to deadboltfilms.com you can find out more about what we do i think the um, website is going to get uh, uh, <clears throat> uh it literally talks this evening i think uh, a, a whole new revamp yeah, at the moment it's deadboltfilms.com, but that may change. Oh, no, no, um, no, that won't change. I'm going to keep that? Okay, cool, cool. Uh, and we're on uh, You've reminded Instagram. me I need to pay for it. <laughs> Please remember to pay for it. Don't lose that. I forgot it, yeah. Uh, we're on Deadbolt Films at Instagram, and if you go to YouTube, that's where our channel is. You can go there now, or if you go on YouTube and just type in Star Wars Sanctuary Moon, that will take you to our latest project we're incredibly proud of, our Star Wars horror film. But also, that will then obviously easily take you to our main page with all our other little bits and bobs on there as well. Finally, if you wish to, if you like what you hear and you want to give us some money and you wish to, you know, support us in that way, we are on Patreon. Um, we have a few, quite a few patrons at the moment, um, and we're very thankful to all of them. Um, just go to Patreon and search for the podcast on Hunted Hill. If you can't find the links, email me or message me on Facebook. I'm always available on Facebook Messenger. Um, and if you become a patron, you get a free T-shirt, which will post you anywhere in the universe or galaxy. Uh, you also get to have your pick a patron pick where you pick two movies for us to review and tell us why you've chosen them what you love about them etc and you get to wear the crown for that episode and of course you get uh, access to all of our back catalogue um, because you'll get exclusive content and every friday we release one of our old episodes um and we're doing that in order right the way through we're just over 100 episodes i've been doing that for two years straight now every week um so it comes now to thank our patrons for their support but exciting gav we yep. have a new patron i know it's so cool thank you so much uh, so thank you so much d d double e d for becoming a new patron thank and supporting you. us d's been listening to the show he says for eight around eight years that's crazy uh and has lived in many countries um but is back in the uk now okay uh but i I believe if i remember rightly canada us and and somewhere else as well so awesome long time listener brilliant that you've joined us time messenger first time patron love you love you d thank you so much yeah you are now on the list of people that i have to read out silly voices for and also d just to make you aware your t-shirt will be being posted within the next couple of weeks so you should get that very soon brilliant um so thank you to all of our patrons starting with you d i'm not doing a sound this time i'm just gonna let you do it Thank, thank you, you to Don Collier. Thank you very much. Matthew Godley. Oh, thank you very much. Jamie. Oh, thank you very much. Kevin S. Fife. Thank you very much. I always want to do a Fife, 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 Fife. I don't know why with that one. It's got it's a good word, Fife. Um, you know, like on Street Fighter, where it's like fight. I Ralph. guess. Sorry, sorry, Kevin. <laughs> uh, thank you to Sarah K. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you to Rachel. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you to RJ McCready. Oh, thank you very much. I'm polishing the crown ready for you for the next episode, RJ. And thank you, of course, to Lex Boo. Oh, thank you very much. Beautiful, lovely, wonderful patrons who thank help keep so the show much. ticking it over. It does. It keeps the, uh, the lights on. It, it helps us to rent and buy Digging Up the Marrow and all these other films that we review. Thank uh, you. It also helps with equipment, T-shirt printing, a billion other things. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, it keeps us going along. keeps us going so we can keep you going mm. along or something. Dan. And that's, and that's it. That is it. Um, yeah, it's a late one now. Uh, you know, make sure you're safe out there and happy in the world. Stay warm because it's still quite wintry here in the UK at the moment. Not too and bad, though. if you get stuck on a stairlift, then pee on yourself to keep yourself warm. Just balance, balance, get your mates to balance it so you can put your bottom over the side. Or jump down and fight the wolves if you're down. And if you're not down, then climb across the cables if you can. Mm-hmm. Or if you're my wife, just pass out until you die. I'm going to go to sleep. It's, well, that's it. <laughs> that's yeah. all she's going to do. That's her superpower. Just sleep. I'm just going to sleep. Oh, okay. it's a good night. And it's a good night 
from uh, Ray Wise naked in a cage. It is indeed. I'm going to have to ask Sarah what she would do, actually, so she can start thinking about that now. Think about what? that now, Sarah. What if she found Ray Wise naked in a cage? What would you do, Sarah, if you found Ray Wise naked in a cage? Get the hose pipe out and wash She'd him off first. probably bring him over and just have him with her uh, tractors and everything else. Pet. Imagine going around there going, oh, I've got, so I've got some lizards, got, uh, scorpion, no, cause bust she, my Ray Wise over The thing there. is, she goes to tranches of things and <laughs> says to me, you'll be happy, I didn't get another tranche. So I was like, yes, we can't, you can't keep getting more and more tranches, they take up room, you know. Uh, so she'd be like, you're going to hate me, but I've got, what, another tranche? No, scorpion? No, what? what is it this time? It's a Ray Wise in a cage. A Ray Wise in a cage? You're not going to hate that, though, are you? You're going to go around there and feed it. Well, not if he's naked and it <coughs> will, like, like he is at the end of it. That's not fun. That's not fun, Ray Wise, is it? It's not. Have you got any good nights? What? Well, I said it's a good night from oh, Ray Wise. And I thought you meant in, in, coming up some good evenings. Um, <laughs> not really. Um, no, I don't know. Ray Wise could be naked in the cage saying goodbye to us. And it's a good night from Adam Green, who 90% believes in Ray Wise's batshit crazy story about monsters coming out of a monster hole in the ground. Everybody be safe out there and come back again real soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.